så god. Vi kan inte Ja, se till. Du, du, gör tummen upp när det är klart. Så gör vi. Jag går in och kollar på Twitch. Mm. So, hello everybody. I am Grandmaster Pia Kramling. I'm Anna's mother. I'm going to comment on her games here in Stockholm, her games in Rilton Elo. Anna is playing in this very, very big tournament, Rilton Cup. We are very proud of it here in Stockholm. And they have just started. I'm a little bit sad. There have been some issue. It took a little bit problem. There were a little bit problem to, to get started. But you know, it's always like that in an open tournament also. You can see they have just started. You see the first moves on the board. And they started like half an hour late in an open tournament with several hundred players. This is very normal that this can happen. And now the first moves has been played. We see that white play d4. We have a queen's gambit here. And uh, the last move was getting up with the knight. And now Anna can decide to play in different ways. She can go out with her knight. She can also go out with her bishop, a little bit slower move. She can play also with her pawns. So let's see what Anna will do. And while her opponent, Anna, is playing against a French player. His name is Alexis Duolt. He has 1764, and as I said, he's from France. So Anna is the favorite according to rating, but uh, you always have to be careful. She's playing with the black pieces. Normally, it's a little bit better to be white. Most of us plays, we prefer to be white. And while her opponent is blitzing out the moves, Anna is a little bit coming down. And this is actually what I like to do. I like to make my moves a little bit slower to feel the tournament, to feel the game. And so Anna is here in Stockholm, is in the heart of Stockholm, and she's playing a tournament which will be going on for a very long time. They will play during nine days. They're starting today. They're going to play nine games, and the last day will be on 5th of January. So there will be nine classical games where they have lots of time. So Anna and her opponent, they get each 90 minutes where they have to make 40 moves. And for each move they make, they get also these 30 seconds extra. And this is a little bit an idea that uh, Bobby Fischer had a long, long time ago before we had these digital clocks. But the idea is, of course, that if you have a winning position, getting half a minute extra, even if you don't have more time, it will be enough to win it. When they make 40 moves, they will get half an hour for the rest of the game, and they will have this half minute per move also. So it is a classical game. It's a long game. Normally games will continue for three, four, five hours. Lots of time, lots of excitement. And uh, uh, let's see what will happen. And we can see that Anna is a little bit slowing down here now before she is making her third move. But as they are playing classic and she has lots, lots of time. So, uh, Rilton Cup, it's about, uh, there are three groups. We can say there are three main groups. The Anna now play C6. Ah, so with this little move, C6, it's a little bit, uh, I would say this is a little bit like um, uh, a slam now. This is very typical to put the pawn here on this square when you play uh, a slav. And so what is the plan with this? Yes, by playing this move now, it could be that Anna is actually planning to take the pawn here on c4. And if White plays something afterwards, she can take maybe the pawn on c4, and later on she can go b5 and to defend this pawn. It means that White would get a lot of center with the pawns, but black can stay with the extra pawn. So c6 was absolutely, is one of those uh, very uh, camera move to play here. Now white have lots of different moves. White can play, let's see, knight f3 if you want to, and let black take this pawn. Then it would actually be an opening called notable. Black can also, and white can also go, for example, play this little move e3, yes, to defend the pawn. But if you go with e3, there's one will have a kind of mirror Then uh, the disadvantage is that this bishop here will not get out. So th that's absolutely also possible. And white can also go, for example, e4 here, just to grab the center, because white has developed one piece, 
black steel with all the pieces here on the first rank. So this is also a possibility of actually something which has become quite popular uh, lately. And what more can black, white plate? White can absolutely, of course, take on d5. Ah, so white plate, knight f3, which means that white has lots of, op of opening or of option open. You develop a piece. White is now a little bit ahead with the piece developed. The two pieces are out and hasn't taken out any piece. So what can she do here? Now I, I would just say, uh, for me, there are more or less um, uh, two moves very, very normal. Wider you go and you take the pawn, and then you, you try to stay with the pawn. White will get it back, but it will be a very kind, very interesting position, or white can play, of course, in different ways. So one is to grab the pawn and say, I have a pawn, I want to stay with it as long as I can. If you want to take it back, I will get some, I will get something in compensation when you take it back. So this is one thing, to take it back. Another thing, another move is very, very logical. Yes, go out with a knight, knight f6, and you have developed, and that uh, then we have a very, very common position. So let's see what Anna will play here. Uh, let's see what she will play here now in this position. So she will be taking her time. Uh, what more can she play? She could play like, because with knight f6, what you also do, you're actually stopping e4. Because if, if you want to play a slow move like this, maybe now white can play e4 and you play it in better circumstances. Uh, the pawn on d4 is defended, so white will get uh, lots of control here in the center, two pawns in the center further up. Black has only this pawn on the third row and will maybe probably have to take like this and this will be a little bit better for white, I would say. We have lots of space here and black will try to get in the long run, try to get c5 or e5 in, but it will take a little bit of time. So this is also possible, but it's more passive. So the more active choices here, I would say, would to be go knight f6, you are stopping e4 because you cannot go e4 any longer. Black will grab the pawn or you play, you take the pawn and you detect c4. These are the most, the two most main, uh, main option here for Anna. But she is, uh, she has played her move. Let's see what she played. She played knight f6. Now we have one of the main, main continuation in the, after the first move d4, d5. So, White can now choose here to go, still this little more e3, to play slowly, to try to get in e4 a little bit later on. White can also play, uh, let's see, let's see, White can also go up with the bishop, and I would say that a bishop e5 would be the most normal, because here the bishop uh, is actually pinning the knight. We cannot move the knight. If you move the knight, you see, we see the queen is behind here, it would just lose the, uh, the queen. So bishop e5 is uh, the most active move, move I have played lots, lots of times. But in the opening, we all have our different patterns we like. Some people, and we, we are a little bit um, like we, uh, we like to uh, play the same pattern all over again. Some people have lots of different patterns, some have less. So let's see what her opponent is going to play here. He is now starting to think a little bit. So. Um, and actually, uh, so this is the main move, e3, it could be bishop g5, a move I have played. Lately, these have become very, very popular. You have to go g3, you have to fianchetto your bishop, whatever black is doing, you just put your bishop here, the bishop is going to g2, you're going to castle, and here on g2 you can see how the bishop also will be looking at the center. But that means that one black is actually going to be able to take this pawn if black wants to. So here there are lots of uh, different ways for black to play. And uh, so Anna is, this, they are playing in Rilton Elo. Rilton Elo is the second tournament in this big chess festival. It's about 140 players. I think it's about 130 players playing today. But I think there are some players who have taken a buy. That means they will not be paired in the first round. They wanted to start later. Maybe they are traveling. They are far away. So they will join tomorrow. Around 100, 130, 140 players. Anna is seeded number seven among these players. And I'm not sure exactly where her opponent is. He is number seven on the second half of, uh, of the players. So... Um, and uh, it's, uh, it's for players who can have up to 
um, up to a 2200 in rating. So let's see, he played bishop d5, and then I'll play bishop e7, e3, and now we have a very, very um, popular queen's gambit here. And where um, uh, black already had put the pawn on c6, e3 came very quickly. We can see that Anna's opponent uh, that he likes to play his move very quickly when he knows them, when he knows what to do. And that is actually what is recommended. When you know what to do, don't spend too much time. You can spend a little bit of time to feel the position, but don't waste time because you will need the time later on. And it's a way to try to avoid time pressure and also to have time when you're getting close to the control with 40 moves. So uh, now Anna is thinking, but we can see she has only spent five minutes for this first move, so she's playing very quickly. Yeah, what can she do? She can, uh, yeah, she will either maybe develop her knight or to go castling. I guess this is the absolutely most uh, popular move here in this position. So we will see some natural developing moves and uh, before they are getting into the middle game, and when they are getting into the middle game, these, this is the most uh, difficult uh, part, I would say, in chess. Um, yeah, also, of course, the end games are difficult. The end games you need to know because with them you can easily handle the middle games. But middle games are always tricky to find good plans and to find uh, mini plans. And the plans we choose depend so much about lots of things, about the pawn structure, how the pieces are staying. Sometimes we can find a plan like, now the plan is quickly develop and put the king into safety. Our king has to be into safety, so this king has to be, you have to castle sooner or later, and of course preferable is to make it sooner. But then when we get into middle game is the pieces has been developed, uh, we have to start to think of other mini plans and that can be very tricky. Even, even, for, even for Grandmaster, it's not always so easy to find the middle plans. So here Anna is a little bit thinking more, uh, but it's absolutely not the critical position. She can play uh, different modes. Um, but she shouldn't be uh, in hurry to take this pawn, no, she shouldn't be, she should wait. She, if she wants to take this pawn, she should wait white for white going out with the bishop first, so white will lose the tempo. So you're not in a hurry to take on c4, because this pawn is standing well here, it's keeping control of e4, it's keeping control of c4, so with that, black is also having a good control in, in the center, in this position. So. Let's see, oops, what did I do here? Uh, I, it came up from the beginning, I'm sorry, but we can see how the moves has been uh, coming out here. Bishop e7, e3, and uh, why is it coming up from the beginning Pause. again? Pause. 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 So, yeah. there, here, so, yes. Okay, so now we have the position here again. So you have seen the first moves coming up, but you don't have to see them all over again. So, um, meanwhile, um, uh, I will tell a little bit about Rilton Cup. It's a tournament which has been going on for more than 50 years. This is the 51st edition, and it's just uh, a tournament I, I have very much to my heart. I have been playing there lots of times, and I have played there quite a few times also, and her father, uh, Juan Manuel Bayon, he's playing in the Rilton Cup, and he has also been playing there quite a lot of times. He actually was the winner. He shared the first place, but he was the winner according to the tie breaks. The year 80, I think it was 85, 86, so it's quite some time back. And in Rilton Cup, in the first group, you have players who has more than 2,200. The number one is uh, Barto Soko from uh, Poland. He's number one. And from second place, the second seed is, his name is Kulaus from Estonia. And as a fourth player, we have the first Swedish player, Erik Blomqvist. But there you have about, you have 130 players, also about the same. And it's a very strong uh, tournament. And there are lots of players from different countries. And as I said, Rilton Cup has been playing for uh, more than 40, more than 50 years. 
And the name Rilton, it's from a man. His name is uh, Tore Rilton. He was a chess lover. He played in a chess club in Stockholm, in Selskapet. And in the summer, 71, he sent some money to the Stockholm Federation, I believe it was, and to the club. I'm not sure to which one. And here it came, Anna played knight b7. This is a very logical move. The knight is the best place here on d7. It's the best place because you don't want to put the knight on the rim, so it has to come here. Also, if black will take on f6, white would take here sometime. You like to take back normally with the knight because the knight will control more squares here. So this was a very logical move Anna played. And um, so uh, Tudor Rilton, he sent some money and he said, make a strong tournament. And uh, they wanted to thank him, they wanted to get in touch with him, but there was no way. So what they did, they started to make a strong tournament and they wanted to name the tournament after Tudor Rilton and that's why it's called Rilton Cup. And the first year when it was uh, played, 91, 92, we had a very famous player who won it, Jan Timan. He was during a long time uh, the Dutch number one. He was one of the best players in the world. He was one of the best players in the Western uh, Europe. And a uh, very exciting player. He's very good analy analyzing. And so he came here to win the tournament. Second time it was won by Walter Brown, who was also a very exciting player and very, very famous for his blitz and for getting into time pressure. I actually played with him once myself, 85, in New York Open, but that's a long time back. I also have played with John Timan. But, so Rilton Cup has been played for a very long time and uh, a tournament where I would say that almost all Swedish young players played here at least once. Almost all uh, title holders also played here once. It was just a tournament which was like a must. You had to play it, you felt you wanted to play it because it's such a nice tournament. You get to get to play strong players, you get to play strong players from your own country, from Sweden, but also from lots of uh, other countries around the world. And here it came, Bishop D3. So if Anna planning to take on c4. Now she can do that because this bishop has, has gone out here to d3 first. It has been moved up here, here. so white has spent one tempo. So there could be some idea, why would black like to take it? Yeah, because we can see this bishop, how are we getting out of it? Yeah, maybe we do it like this. And then maybe we want to go a6. And now the plan is to go c5 quickly. You go something like here, and we are trying to challenge the center with c5. If you go something like there, here the bishop is coming out. And we see finally the bishop is also active. So this is a plan that uh, black like to have. And it's a little bit of a slow plan, but we can see from the position we have at the board that uh, we have it like uh, this here. So uh, this bishop can only come out here on b7, and this is the most natural plan. So, uh, so taking on c4, sorry, this is the last move. Uh, this is absolutely possible. I would say castling is also a fine move, absolutely. Black can also kick here, kick the bishop, because if white would take, you take back with a knight. And now black has the bishop pair, which is something to count on when we get into end game. Uh, an, equal, an end game with equal pawns, equal pawn structure. Uh, but if you have some open files, or even if it's closed, but you can play for open the files, the bishop pair could be something to count on. It could be an advantage. So be a little bit careful with giving away the bishop pair. So let's see here what, what was played. Anna, she took on c4, she took directly. Uh, white will certainly take back. Let's see. White haven't done that. And after that, I think we will see a b5 move. And uh, uh, so, uh, because Anna really quickly, she wants to get out with her bishop here on b7. And so she get out with her knights. They are developed. One bishop is developed, but she want to get out with the other bishop. So uh, let, let see why is her opponent thinking. It could be that he has uh, gone up from the board or he is just, uh, let's see, 
it doesn't he take it? Yeah, because he has only one move to do. He has to take, he has to take back the pawn. And here it came. And Anna played b5 immediately, but her opponent, he was equal, quick, and he put the bishop on d3. Uh, this is absolutely the most logical square because the bishop here on this d3 square, you can see how it controls e4. e4 is one of these very, very important square in the center. I will just put them in blue. You see them. This is a little bit of the bridge. These are the four main squares. Those are so important to have under control and to fight for. And if you can get one of your pawns to get over this bridge or to get into the other camp, is normally something very good. But white is not close to do it. Black is not close to do it. White is a little bit closer. But this is the reason why uh, white wanted to put the bishop on d3, control the square on e4. But we can also see that this bishop is looking at black's king side. And this king is certainly going to be on the king's side. So later on, when black will castle, you see that his bishop will look at the king's side. So this bishop can be an attacking bishop, can be a bishop to count on, to try to get the king under attack. So this is why bishop d3 that her opponent played immediately was a very logical move. It was the best square for the bishop. So, and that's why he played it so quickly. So let's see. Now Anna is thinking, and what move would I would say? I would just say a6 could be your move, and also bishop b7. And the idea with a6 is now after a6, you can go c5 very, very quickly if you want. And you are also planning bishop b7 and c5. If you go bishop b7, the plan has to be maybe to go b4 and c5, because we can see that b5 is not defended yet. So it's possible to play both of it, I would say. So let's see what Anna is going to do here. Uh, let's see what she will do. Uh, let's see how, what she is playing here. She's thinking a little bit, but they have already made eight moves, and I've been spending like 23 minutes. Uh, no, not 23 minutes, only 13 minutes. So they have been playing uh, quite uh, quickly, and um, so Anna, yeah, she takes a little bit of time here, but there is quite a lot of time. And in this tournament, uh, we have. Uh, so we have two Swedish junior. She played B4 already now. I would say that this was a little bit um, quickly uh, to play, but what is the plan? Why is she kicking the bishop the knight so early? Because she is in hurry. She didn't want to defend B5. She pushed it further because her plan is to go, let's say you go something like this. It could be that she wants to go c5 very, very quickly. It could be that she wants to make this move so quickly, knight d4, c5. But if she makes a move like this, it's a little bit tricky because if you take here now, she will maybe need to take back. Uh, yeah, maybe she can take here. Yeah, this is possible because if you take like this, we will actually have a very good pawn here down uh, taking and taking on b. Uh, and then we have bishop c3, I can just yes, give you here, and the king, and this will just yes, be good for black. So she has, so this is why she played b4. She felt that uh, she is putting the knight under attack. She felt that she has to do something quickly. And so that's why she played this move so, uh, uh, so quickly. And uh, here there are two very logical moves for white, I would say. One is to go knight e4, one is to go knight, uh, knight a4. These are the moves. If, if you would go something like this, yeah, then I think uh, maybe the logic is just to go castling. If you go castling and we go just c5 here. I think this is, now black is absolutely fine, um, absolutely fine. There are no, if you take here, just take back and there are no checks, checks, anything, nothing that can annoy black. And uh, black has this beautiful knight on c5. This bishop will come out here and will also be looking at wise king side. This is a position which is already more pleasant for, for black here. So uh, here in this position we have at the board, the knight on c3 is under attack. White has to move the knight. And we can see there are only four possible squares. 
Um, actually, this might look like a fan animal, but it's not that... Um, uh, th there's a plan be by, uh, behind it. And we can see that when you go B4, this quite C4 is just now not under attack by the black pawn any longer. It means like if this knight could move here, it would be a fantastic knight, a beautiful knight. So going to B1, the idea would be going knight E2, knight C4, from where the knight would be looking at e5, looking at d6, looking even at b6, it would be a very beautiful place. But it's quite a long um, route to get there, so I think uh, this is not uh, what you expect uh, your opponent to play here. Uh, you expect your opponent to, to put the knight in a more active square, and I would say knight e4 is one, knight e4 is another one. These are the most uh, yeah, those are the most likely. This is actually one more move white could play if white want to. White can take on f6 if white would like to. And the if you take with the knight here, then maybe knight f4 and black doesn't uh, be, cannot be able, the black cannot play c5 here any longer. And if you play with, take with the bishop, yeah, then I guess knight e4 will come, bishop e7, and maybe something like queen c7, and we see that this pawn is under attack, will go something like here, but you have maybe you can go rook c1 here. And we see that black, uh, this pawn is under attack, and black is also, so like castling, we go rook c8, and if you make something slow like here, maybe we can go, I don't know, can we go maybe c5 here? No, they could be quick too quickly because we are pinned there. There are some tactics because we are behind in the development. So maybe if we go something like, like let's say we go castling, uh, you go h3, we go c5, but not even, yeah, maybe this, this could be possible. Finally, when we have developed all the pieces, c5 will be good here and that will be probably not possible to go and take the pawn. But this is so far away, so, so far away. And we have now, let's see, white is thinking here. White is taking a bit of time, and this is absolutely right, because this is a position where you should uh, use your time uh, to decide where the knight should go. It will, the plans will be different. Uh, depending on uh, what white will play here. So it's, it's just quite an important uh, moment for white here. And what would I guess? I will guess knight e4 or knight a4, one of these two. And uh, if you go knight e4, and if you take here, I don't know, could it be that uh, white, uh, black, uh, white is concerned by this? And what will happen here? If you take here, we can see that black has actually won a pawn, black will be very, very happy. So I think this is what Anna is counting on. So uh, let's see here, coming back, knight e4, taking here, and there is no time for white to take here because we will just grab the piece and after something like that, we just move the rook and everything is under control and yeah, black has won a piece. So it could be, that white is a little bit scared of going knight e4, and then maybe knight a4 will be the most logical move for to play. So let's see what white is thinking. And so that's why taking here is actually um, very, very interesting, because the idea is to take here, is to get better control of this square. This looks very, very strange, but it's actually, because if you take a knight, and after knight and four, black only control this square with one piece. If you take with the bishop, we have knight and four. And again, it's only knight who defends it to control this square. And uh, as we saw before, the plan is to kick, attack this pawn, but also try to avoid that black gets the c5 pawn going. Because if black gets the c5 pawn going, let's say we go queen b6, you go castling here, maybe now we can go bishop, C, we can go maybe c5, or we go like there, you, if you make something slow, we have this c5, uh, perhaps uh, uh, quickly or not. No, there are some tricks always, there are always some tricks here. We have, and we have a check, and when you take here, we have this. So this is, of course, uh, good for white, white has won a palm, 
um, will be an end game where black will fight with the pawn down, but this is not nice to play. So it is, it is very difficult for black to get in c5, uh, actually, even if, because you need the rook to also to stand behind the pawn, so it will be very, very well defended. So let's see what white will do here. It's such an exciting moment. It's so exciting. I, yeah, I'm curious. I expect, if I could guess, I am expecting knight a4, but that you play that because after knight e4, uh, there could be a pawn going. Uh, I am not, uh, so uh, I, I think he, this is why he's thinking. He would like to go knight e4, but it's a little bit tricky. So knight a4 over here, but knight e2, you see this knight is more active because what we are fighting about, fighting, uh, there is a fight between white and black of this square. Because we can see that this is a backboard pawn. If black managed to get c5 in under good conditions, black will be fine. If white managed to stop this pawn, white will have the advantage. So this is the fight about this square, which already started, uh, has started now. And so every move here will be so important. If white makes a little bit slow move or a little bit of move which is not maybe the best or not one of the good choices, here there are different good choices, then it will be make will make it easier for black. So let's see, and we can see that white is spending almost almost 10 minutes. I think he has been standing spending eight minutes here for his last move and we can see there are only two things he can choose. He can choose not only to, he can choose several moves for the knight, there are four knight moves to, to choose from, but he can also take with his bishop. And he play knight a4 and I would say that this is just a very very uh, logical move to play because he's making a grip uh, on the c5 square and so what can I say is normally I would say that castling is a very normal move to play here for Anna, maybe bishop b7 could be normal, uh, also, uh, or maybe queen a5. So maybe, yes, bishop b7, you want to go here. If you go c5, I'm not so sure about c5, uh, because after a move like this, oh, yeah, we will have, yeah, this could be very, very, it looks very, very dangerous. Actually, I don't know, here, maybe we would need to go something like here. We have check here, what will happen with the king here. We have a little bit of king in the middle, but maybe maybe this could be possible to play. But there are something, 95, 97 coming here. This is getting so, so dangerous. This is getting so dangerous with the queen, with the king in the middle. No, we don't want to do that. So we don't want to play c5 too early. I really hope Anna is not doing that. And, but this was a little bit her plan. Her plan was to go b4 because she wants to play c5. So just hope she is not going to play c5 too early. I, I just hope she will not do that, that she just play maybe bishop b7. We have castling here, maybe castling, maybe rook to c1, and then we go maybe rook to c8. If you go something like here, maybe now finally we can go a5, or we can even go a c5, or we can even go queen a5, kick, uh, threatening the, the knight, and after move like b3, now we should have c5. And now finally, finally, black had got this c5 with good circumstances. Now this position will be absolutely fine for black. Absolutely fine for black. Hmm. So, but this is not the position on the board. Uh, we have this position. Anna is taking her time and it's very, very important what she plays. I think her plan was to go C5 here, but C5 is very, very dangerous to play already here. It's better to castle first. It's absolutely better to castle first. And this is a little bit of saying we have to, that we open up in the center with our pawns. We put we take as control in the center with our pawns, we fight for the center with them, we put our pieces on good squares, also looking toward the center, and then we put our king into safety, we castle. After that, we start the actions. So Anna already started the action, so I just hope that she will go back 
put the king into safety because and after that she can continue to, to play for this plan to go see fi because this is her most important plan to get this pawn in to get this pawn moving up to see fi but in the best conditions as possible now it's still very very early so I, I would just like her to go either bishop b7 or castling uh, maybe queen a5 could be possible but why not castling I would like that but uh, then when she went b4 it was a little bit like saying I want to go c5 and I would actually guess that we will see c5 on the board but it is a dangerous move to play already now I would say it is a dangerous move to play already here so uh, let's see she is taking her time we can see she looks very very focused her opponent is also sitting there at the board and we can see uh, the nice playing hall they have a uh, Rilton cup is played in the heart of Stockholm is played in Scandic Hotel Continental just uh, just in front of the railway station and you can actually come traveling from all over the world and you don't have to get out you get to the airport Arlanda and there you can go uh, there you can go um, uh, directly with the train you get to the railway station you go under the tunnel so you don't even have to have a coat with you you can travel with a t-shirt or wherever you want because you're all the time indoors and uh, so it's just in a very very lovely place and when you get out of the hotel you can find all these nice places around Stockholm you're not so far away from the old town which is very very emblematic very very beautiful and uh, so it's it's just I would say that um, uh, it's just a lovely place where it is held and Rilton Cup is actually a chess festival with lots of tournaments there are Rilton Cup the biggest tournament the, the, the crown of the tournament with the strongest players I don't still have the number with how many countries who are here playing players from different countries how many grandmasters I will look for that and uh, so there are lots of players there are 130 players but lots of tight hotels and um, among them very very many exciting players players who are coming back year after year also because they love to come and play in this very traditional tournament which has been going on for 51 years actually the first time it was held was for 52 years but because of pandemic they had to skip uh, one year and instead they had uh, Rilton Cup online for the winners uh, but so Anna is taking yes yeah, still her time and so that's the crown group the second group is Rilton Elo where Anna is playing there's 140 players and I see the number seven her rating is 2094 she has like 300 points more than her opponent but it's always very tricky with players uh, uh, you never know how they will play you always have to play your best when you play uh, even if you're opponent is less uh, rated uh, always to be careful and uh, do your best and um, then there is another tournament which will only start on the 2nd of January it's for player up to 1800 so they don't have to play nine games in nine days they will play seven games in like uh, in four days so it will be from the 2nd to the 5th and so they will be more concentrated then there will be a blitz tournament on the 1st of January for those who love to play that there will also be a rapid tournament I think it's on the 3rd there will be uh, some um, um, people are telling about some chess history so there will be a speech about Folke Rogad who was actually the FIDE president he was very important in the Swedish chess and uh, so there will be a speech about him I think it's on the 30th there will be a girl tournament a girl and actually a woman tournament it's both so any woman who would like to play in any year you can be a junior you can be a grown-up there's a there's a woman uh, there's a girl woman tournament on the 29th which will start 11 o'clock so everyone is welcome to play there it will be, be rapid chess and uh, so there are lots of activities around and uh, uh, you can come here of course to the to the venue it's not possible to enter the playing area the playing area is only for the players it has been decided to do it like this 
this year for seven reasons, but there are other, you can come and listen to the commentaries because there are also two very well-known persons here who are commentating on the games from Wilton Cup. I'm only commentating on Anna's game and she's taking now a long foot, but uh, there is Tom Wilberg, who is a very well-known grandmaster in Sweden, who actually won this tournament for about a little more than 30 years ago, together with Jesper Hall, who also is very well-known. Uh, he's written books, he's a commentator, he's a trainer, he has been doing lots, lots of things, and he's also an international master. So there are lots of things going on here, so it could be nice just to come to the venue, to feel the atmosphere, even if it's not possible to get into the playing hall, but to feel the atmosphere. You can get the, you can make, maybe to see the players, and you can see the live commentary uh, by these two uh, um, players, Jesper Hall and Tom Wilberg. And now Anna is taking long after knight a4. I think she was hoping so much for white to go with the knight to e4. She wanted to take it, she wanted to grab a pawn, but after knight a4 she has to make a decision. And I just hope that she will castle. Just put the king into safety. The king stands better there. Even if this bishop is looking at the king's side alone, it will not make anything because this pawn is well, the square is well defended by the knight. If you castle, this is what I'm hoping she will do, it will also be defended by the king and the knight. There is no danger, not yet. It can be later. But the king is so much safer here when you have castle. We don't have to worry about any checks. Uh, if you've pushed the pawn, like, so this is a very good move to play. And I could also go this little slow move, B, bishop b7, because she's playing to go c5, and after c5 has been played, this bishop is becoming active, looking at the knight, looking at wise king side. So these are the absolutely the main uh, moves. And I could also go up queen a5, a little bit to look at the knight, uh, look at the bishop, and, but this knight is already defending, so mm, it's not so important move to make. I would say that uh, I, I don't like this move so much already here. Uh, I would prefer her not to play that. I would prefer her to go bishop b7 or maybe to go castling. And I think castle, castle is yes, a very good move to make in, in this uh, position. So. And yeah, Rilton Cat has all the way, already from the beginning, been held the same days. Always started on the 27th, always finished on the 5th of January. So there you always used to be one a free day. So, uh, so, so it has kept this tradition and I think it's just so beautiful. I knew when I was a kid, I knew in a Christmas time when I have holidays from school, I knew what I was going to do. And the first year uh, when I uh, came up to Rilton Cup, it was held in the school in Kristine Bay, Kullskolan, I didn't dare to play. So I went there watching every day and it was so exciting. It was an uh, Italian grandmaster who won the tournament, Mariotte. This is a long time back, 76. But it was so exciting to see all the games and I was walking around there, looking at the players, guessing the moves. And when I've done that uh, the whole Christmas, I decided that the next year I will play myself. And after that, I play lots of years, like lots of other Swedish players. And yeah, here Anna is now thinking uh, longer. That could be a little bit um, curiosity, because when you make B4, uh, it's normal because it's quite a commitment move what Anna played because white has a grip of the square now and uh, so it's quite important when you may before to be sure of your following up but it's possible that Anna realized that what she wanted to do now could be too dangerous. I actually expect Anna to go c5. This is very tempting, but it's very it's, it's quite dangerous to play it already. You have some checks on b5, and uh, uh, it means also if you take on f6, you might need to take back with a pawn. So uh, let's see what she will play. Uh, let's see what she will play. Uh, but I am actually expecting Anna to go c5, but because it's the 
a logical continuation of what uh, she has played, but it is not maybe the best move, it's dangerous to play it, but it's because she wants to get rid of this backward pawn. It's a backward pawn because white will quickly play a rook to c1, and we'll look at here, and this rook will, con will attack the pawn, but not only con attack the pawn, the rook will also control the square in front of the pawn, and that's very important. So for white, it would, for black, it would be better maybe if uh, white had this pawn here, then it would never be any problem to get this c5 in here. But now with this open file, after rook c1, the rook will actually control c5, and also, or after queen c2, the queen will also control c5, attacking c6, and there will also be, the queen will actually make two functions. It will look along the c-line, controlling c5, attacking c6, but to get a bit of bishop, they will also look at the king side. There will not be danger of a mate, but black will always have to look at his pawn, so it not will be hanging. So black will need to defend the pawn with the knight, or maybe to move a little bit further, so it will not be hanging. So let's see, Anna is still thinking, I will take away this arrow, they will maybe make a little bit, oh yeah, confusing, so let's see if we can have them away. There, yeah, we do like this, then oh, okay. we, don't, <laughs> we don't get them, yeah, so we got lots of arrow, I take it away, let's see here. Uh, yeah, we got the smaller. So, and now uh, we have here. Oops. Ah, uh, so now we got. Oops. Can take. So. I just want to take away all the arrows. So, so this is the position, and Anna is thinking, and I'm not su surprised. There are some time since Anna played her last classical game, even if you play lots of blitz and rapid, to play classical is different and everyone has their own style. Anna likes to use her time, I am very much like that, we are very very similar, we are slow players. Anna's dad, Juan Bayon, he likes to make quick decisions and that's very very good to play quicker. And so Anna is taking her time. And the last time she played her classical tournament, I believe this was when she played the European Team Championship in uh, Budva, in uh, Montenegro. So it's, uh, it's about a month, it's more than a month, a month and a half ago. So that's some time ago. So uh, that's why um, I think she will take a bit extra more time this first round. And the first round is always a little bit more nervous. You, you want to get to feel the tournament. It's so important to have a good start and uh, you feel maybe a little bit more uncertain, so the moves come uh, maybe a bit uh, slower than normal also. And what more? Yeah, so that's what I think. She, eh, this move I don't like here now, it's because then I just think you, you should have laid it early. I like castling. I, I guess see if I could be coming. It, it's dangerous, it, but it can be timing. Or oh, bishop b7. These are the logical move for me. Uh, for, for me uh, to choose from for Anna. So let's see what she will be, let's see what she will be doing here now. And uh, this tournament will be played every day at 3 o'clock, only on the 31st, the last day of the year. Everyone wants to celebrate uh, the new year, so it will start earlier at 12 o'clock and also when they have the last round on uh, the last round on the 5th of January, there will be a morning round, but it will start at 12 o'clock, so it's not, and it's not so early. But all the other rounds will start 3 o'clock and they will play with the same time. And we can see how Anna is, she is so focused at her board, she is really just sitting there and not moving. We can also see that her opponent, he likes to sit, he doesn't go up. Uh, everyone is different with that too. Uh, some people like to sit a lot, Anna likes to sit also. And some people, when the, their opponent is thinking, they like to walk up, like to look at that against, but it could also be a way of 
getting away with her thoughts to think of something else and a little bit to relax. And, but we are all yes, yes, so different uh, at the board and that is quite, quite exciting uh, to, to see. And, uh, and in the chess tournament, it's almost uh, like you can hear the silence. It's, it's very quiet. Um, sometimes you can hear when some people are walking, but it's very, very quiet. And it's just a very, very, very special atmosphere. Uh, I really love it when I see uh, a chess tournament go on. I really love to see the players, the, their faces, uh, how they're acting at the board. Some people are very quiet. Some people can show a lot in their faces or in their body if they like the position or not. We are all very different and it's all very, very, very exciting uh, to see. And uh, yeah, we can see how Anna is so focused. She's really so focused and it looks like it will take a bit of time before she will make her, uh, before she will decide what she's, going, uh, what she's going to do. And I just hope she's not spending too much time. I don't want her to have time trouble. I really want her uh, not to get into, to, to be able to play the last 10, 15 moves without having time trouble. But she has been spending now like, what could it be, 15 minutes, something like that. That's quite a long time for her last move uh, because she played the other moves quicker. But she has uh, now realized that uh, maybe the plan she wanted to play, that she is not sure if it's the right one and she wants to check it again. Yes, so she is thinking and I'm getting a little bit uh, nervous here, but let's see, let's see what she will, what she will be uh, doing. And yeah, behind. And there are no, uh, this year there are no spectators. Behind now we can see Anna's father, Juan Bion. He's coming and watching, looking at the game a little bit from far away. Uh, yes, to see what's, what's happening. Yes, a little bit. And then um, I guess he's going back to his uh, own board. But he's a player who likes to walk around when he is not uh, thinking, when it is not his move. He likes to walk around a lot. Uh, but yeah, like uh, now he left there, so he's playing in another part of the playing hall because with so many players they have a lot of different rooms and but there are only players we can see, we can see players, we can see the arbiters and the people working uh, in the Rilton Cup but there are no spectators unfortunately this year uh, they had to decide not to have any spectators uh, for different reasons and uh, um, so, so there are, so there will be less uh, crowded. It will be absolutely easier to see Anna's uh, board. It will be easier to see it with less people here. But she is thinking so much. She is thinking so much. I'm getting a little bit nervous here. Why? But I know, I know, I want to say why, but at the same time, I know why. Because it is a critical moment. It's so important how she continues. It was also critical, I would say, the last two moves. She went for a plan, but now she is scared to make the most logical following up. And she is right to think so. Because Playing C5, which I would absolutely say is the most logical follow-up, is actually a bit dangerous to do. It is actually a bit dangerous to make this action before you have put the king into safety. And the king is so much safer when you have castle, when you have put it here. So this is actually a very good move to do. I would have preferred that Anna castle before she made all these actions. But now when she has done it, um, she... She needs to castle anyway, so it would be a good moment to do that. Uh, but she is thinking, yeah, she is still taking lots of time for, for, for this move. 
And so what Anna have now, she has 55 minutes left and they have played like uh, 10 moves. We are waiting for the 10th move. So Anna has 55 minutes for her 20, uh, 31 move to make. It's still lots of time, very, very much time, like two minutes, a little bit less than two minutes and you will get half a minute per move. So it's still lots of time. The problem is that when you get into rhythm, you get to start playing slowly, then it's easy that every move will take like five, ten minutes and there's not five, ten, ten minutes for each move. So uh, you have to get into it where you play a little bit quicker uh, but of course in critical moments you have to be thinking. But now I guess Anna has been thinking here 20 minutes which is quite a lot of time and I try to tell myself when I am spending lots of time don't use more than 20 minutes. I think it was, maybe it was John Nunn, a grandmaster from England who said that. Uh, don't spend more than 20 minutes because when you spend more time, you will actually just calculate the same lines over and over again. You will not see anything you knew. You have probably already decided what you want to do uh, and just, just make the move because you are spending so much time and uh, 20 minutes should be a little bit the limit for for one move. So let's see if Anna is on her way to move, but she is so focused. She's really so focused. She's not moving at all. She's just looking at the board, fully, fully concentrated. And let's see what is she going to do. Now I think she's on her way to maybe make the move. She is on her way to decide what she is going to do. And it's quite, I'm getting nervous here, a bit nervous, but I'm expecting her to put, to push her C4 uh, one step further. I'm expecting Anna to play this move C5. It's, it's a bit dangerous to do that, but it's the most consequent plan when she has played the way she played. So let's see what she is going to do. Let's see what she will play here. Uh, but I think this is the move I would expect Anna to do because it's, it's a fight about uh, the squares, it's a fight about this c5 square and like that she gets the pawn there uh, very very quickly uh, but it's, it's, it's a bit dangerous to do it so early but she will be re get rid of her backward pawn on c6 if she plays like that. And we can see that her opponent, he likes to sit at the board but he is not um, uh, looking so much at the board now when Anna looks a little bit relaxed, it looks a little bit like she's relaxed or maybe decided, decisive, she's on her way to make her move, uh, then they're both focused on what is happening on the board. And Anna played queen a5, yeah, this was absolutely a tempting move. It's not a move I am so fond of, but it's nothing wrong with this move. I wouldn't say it's so wrong to play this move. Uh, and the idea with this move is that you are, uh, you're looking at this knight, but black is also controlling c5 square. So her idea, I guess, is if you go here, I think Anna wants to go c5. I think this is her idea here, but I don't know really what could be happen here like this. Queen e2, maybe Lee castling, and and then she will absolutely be ready to play with this pawn structure. She will have the bishop pair, but she will have a dangerous pawn structure. If the knight is coming around here, she wants to go queen d2. If you have a check here, she can go queen g5. And if you go something like that, you get into an end game. And this is what you want to do. You want very much to play the end games. This is absolutely because you have the bishop pair. But this is very, very dangerous to play. But I think this is the idea Anna wants to play. She play queen a5. If white will go castling, I expect her to go c5. And what she wants to do is, I don't know if she can play here, if she can go take queen, take a5. But this could be, could this be dangerous to play queen a5? And uh, do we have, yeah, we have a check here. Oh, no, this is very dangerous here. Here, we get something like bishop e4, rook b8. Now, this is just a losing because maybe we have queen d6 here. And then after a move like this, we will have lots. So, yeah, we just grab the rook, of course. So, no, this is not possible. So, she has to be very, very careful with this 
to go see fight. So I guess if your opponent goes castling, Anna needs to go castling or maybe bishop a6 is a good move. Maybe this could be a good move to play. Uh, and the plan is actually, if you go something like, oh, you can't go, if you go something like here, maybe, yeah, we will win a piece, of course. Now, this is not possible, of course. So, yeah, it could be. You're, you're changing your passive bishop, but Anna will be stay with his pawn. So, I don't know if you can go something like knight e5, and this pawn will be very weak in the long run. Yeah, this is also not, this is just, let's see, we go something like this. And we will have, we will have lots of problems here. We will see queen c5. This is absolutely getting very, very dangerous here. After a move like queen d6, we will at least be able to kick this here. And yeah, but a position like this is just tremendous for, for white. It's white has so much control of everything. Uh, you have a knight on c5, you're controlling this d5, you can take away this knight whenever you want, and um, yeah, and you have this backward pawn, which means that this pawn is not able to move. You want to get it to c4, maybe further, you can't get it to move. So here black will be very, very passive. So let's go back, let's go back. So this is the uh, uh, queen a5. So this is what Anna played, and she wants to control c5 squared. She wants to keep this possibility open to exchange her bishop on a6 and so what can white do white could actually uh yeah so rook c1 could be absolutely a possibility but it could be that white is a little bit scared of this check b3 that white a little bit annoyed by this check so uh, and i so uh I, I would say that in this position, because this is also, sometimes it could be possible be free, that this is annoying, because your idea is if you play something slow, like here, be free, queen d2, we will probably just go, oh, we will, of course, we take the knight, yeah, we, so of course, so this is not, so after a move like b3 here, the only move you can play is knight c3, and maybe now we can start bothering here, we can go, maybe we can go bishop b4, but maybe this is not such a good move. Maybe we can start now to go c5. And we have seen that uh, we have got the pieces, the knight to go back. Now we can now play c5 with good, uh, st uh, good conditions. I don't know, queen b6 or queen c7. Maybe queen c7 is absolutely fine here to play. If you go here, we will just move the knight queen somewhere. So this is absolutely fine. Or maybe we can go queen b6 also, maybe even directly in a position like this. So uh, this is absolutely fine. So let's go back here. I would just guess if black, white is worried about b3 check uh, and you want to cook, you put the king into safety, castling is the most natural move. I think we will see castling on the board. You don't have to worry about anything. Uh, what more can we guess? Yeah, you could play a move like this. And now, probably, it could be that it's better to take back with a pawn. And why is it better to take back with a pawn? Why are we want to damage our own pawn structure? It's again this square. We are fighting about c5. Because like this, the bishop keeps the control on c5. The knight keeps the control on c5. The queen keeps the control on c5. So it could be a possibility absolutely to think of, to take back with the pawn. Because if you take back like this, uh, after bishop take, we take back like this, maybe move like rook c1, uh, now we have b3. I'm forgetting this. So after castling here now, uh, maybe bishop a6, uh, we have this more control. If you go castling now, now we can go rook c1, and we will have the knight coming here to c5. This will be absolutely a little, a little bit more better for uh, white. I'm just wondering, can we maybe grab this pawn here? No, we cannot because we always have this knight hanging here. So this is absolutely fine. So now after we have this position like this, but we go with the rook to c8 and knight e5, we're grabbing and we don't, maybe we will go something like rook c7 to go rook c8. I'm not sure after knight takes here. This is actually probably a mistake because you go away with the bishop and we have this plan of playing rook c8 here 
and we will win some material. So this is not possible. So maybe more like rook c7. Let's say you go something like this. We have rook f8, and our plan now is to go. If it goes something small move, maybe we will go knight to 7 keeping the control, and finally we're trying to get in c5. It's very, very slowly, but it will perhaps uh, be possible after some time. So let's go back. Let's go back. Queen f5 was played. Her opponent is also thinking. Anna is down to 52 minutes. Her opponent has 20 more minutes, uh, 20 more, 20 more minutes more on the clock, but he is thinking. He's taking his time. He is fully concentrated, and Anna is also fully concentrated. We can see them both there at the board. It's just very exciting. We are getting soon into the middle game, and, but both of them needs to castle. Both of them needs to castle soon. Will we see that on the board? I would guess so. I think that is absolutely the most logical move to do to castle here. Uh, of course, white could play this king a2, but it just looks so um, uh, unnecessary. Why to have the king in the middle when the king is so much safer here? It's so much better placed here. The e2 square could be a square, good square later on for the queen to go to e2 when the knight first has been defended. So uh, let's see here now what is he going to do. He is just thinking. He looks, uh, he, but he looking both. Fuller focus on the board. So queen a5, yeah, that was also a very tempting move uh, to play that Anna played. Uh, so she put her queen on an active square um, and she is fighting for the c5 square. She also has some plans of going b3 check to annoy her opponent because if her opponent would play, I don't know, if you go something like e4, can you do that? Maybe we go bishop a6 and all of a sudden, you can, we can see, I just want you to see this here. And if you go e5, we have position like this. And this is actually not so good for white to play like this because uh, we have been too quickly with the center pawn. With putting the pawn on e5, there a hole here. It's a hole on d5. So this is a beautiful square for the knight. And so here, black is completely fine. It's about equal, but black is absolutely fine because you have this beautiful square for this knight from the, where the knight will be in the center and it will be fantastic outpost because the only way to take away the knight from d5 is with exchanging for another piece with another knight. So here black would be very happy. It would be about equal. So maybe white is also happy, but black is absolutely also happy here. So let's go back. So this is, you know, we have to, with every pawn move, we are moving further. We have to think of, is this right to move it further on? Because the pawn moves kind of take back and the pawns are the soul in our position. The pawn structure says us a lot of how to plan the middle games. And here it came, he played castle. This was a very good move. This was a very good move and was a very logical move uh, because he got away. Now b3 is of course not possible. You just grab it with whatever you want. You can take it like that. You can take it with other pawn because there's no check. So this was very logical. And so I guess Anna will maybe make c5 here, but I just hope she goes castling. I just hope she goes castling or maybe bishop b7 could be a possibility. He has to go bishop b7. I don't know. If you go rook c5, do, do we dare to go some c5 or maybe rook c8 could be a possibility. If you take here, we can take maybe back with a pawn or maybe we can take with a piece, but actually taking with a pawn. If you go queen e2, I don't know if you can go, yeah, all the time. We have to do it. And if you go something slowly b5, now finally we get in c5. Now it's very well defended. We have this damage pawn structure. I know this, this is looking more dangerous down to here, but let's see. I just want to show after all, if these old pieces come off, we can see that this queen can also come to the king side and uh, also come to the king side. And if you would make something like here, we would actually have some very, very Absolutely. Very, very tricks here against the king side. I just want you to see that there will come. Uh, there is just very, very, you know, we have this shack here and maybe here 
and then we have F5, but we are getting some dangerous things down here also. So this is, it's about equal, there's no problem. We can have him maybe go queen g5, no, we have f4, we don't want to do it. If you come here, you can go maybe f4 and everything is defended. It's about equal position like this. We have different color bishop, it looks dangerous, but white is actually fine in this also, but it's about equal. But what I wanted to show is that this queen, we are starting from this position, this is how it looks like at the board. The queen is placed on the queen side, but it could be good coming uh, over here also on the queen side, on the king side. So um, let's see what Anna is, uh, what uh, Anna will do here, do here, but I hope she will go castling, that she doesn't hurry with c5, this could be very, very dangerous. So I hope she, she doesn't play c5, this could actually be uh, something uh, very, very bad uh, to play, but I'm a little bit worried that this has been her plan. So just going castling now would be very good to play. She can play this castling after e4. She could actually go h6 move. If you take here now, now we will take back with something. I don't know if you take this way or that way. Maybe we go something like this, but now the pawns in the center, no, we will actually probably will start to, maybe we can start to defend, uh, we start to defend the pawn, but we have rook d8, and when the e pawn has been moving, d4 is not as stable as before. So this we can absolutely, uh, you, can, you can absolutely play. So let's see what Anna is doing. I just hope, I just hope she goes castling. C5 now could be very, very dangerous, very, very dangerous to play, because there could be some, uh, uh, very, very, if this move comes, I just think this here and here, this is just very, very dangerous her. Maybe she needs to go some bishop b7 first, and after rook c1, maybe she can go bishop takes c5, queen e2, and maybe she can go castling. Maybe she will be fine here, but what would happen if I go move like queen c2? Maybe, maybe this is fine. We have the rook here and there. The queen is maybe not so well placed here on, on the same line as, as the, uh, as, um, uh, the other way around. The queen is also placed as so good on the same line as the black rook. So these are things black is hoping for. Of course, to open up the bishop, to open up the position, to get the bishops to play. But you also need to have the, the king, uh, uh, the, the king into safety. So uh, let's see what Anna will do. She is thinking. She has been thinking like four or five minutes on this move, and I understand it for because every move feels critical for her because every move she will make here either she will put her king into safety it could be that she doesn't want to castle because she see queen c2 and after queen c2 uh, could it be that she is scared of this move here but no uh, I don't think so because now I, I'm making lots of things we have bishop take here what is going to take happen here can you take here now uh, no we have this lull in between move and all of a sudden after knight c5, we grab the knight with one of the knights, we can take it with this one, we can actually take it with that one, and black is a piece up. So it doesn't work, it doesn't work. So, but Anna is a little bit concerned perhaps about this. Castling queen c2, because if she's a little bit scared that if you go, for example, you can go h6, but then c6 pawn might be hanging. What will happen here? Uh, we cannot take here because we have bishop d7, there will be peace, wind hanging. We have this here. I want to show it to the end. So there are always so much tactics. Of the age, can we play this move? Can we take it directly? Probably not, because you take on g5. When you take here, we take on e4 and a4. And we can see that white can take here, but this is just the, probably a big mistake. Maybe bishop a6 is a good move. No, we have queen a7. But this queen is not getting out so easily. We start with knight e5. And we have a queen which is might be trapped very very soon here. No, we don't want to play this. But this is very far away. But I wanted to say that in a position like this, white has rook and two pawns for one knight and bishop. And this could be good in the end game, but not here where the queen is badly placed. Not here with lots 
with the queens on the board and also with a very badly placed queen is not enough. But in an endgame, this would probably be good enough to play with. Rook and two pawns in the endgame can be stronger than a knight and a bishop. Absolutely can be that the rook and one pawn can even be stronger and the knight and bishop in the endgame. So we have to always value uh, the positions and uh, we have to see how it looks like in the uh, middle games. The knights and bishops are stronger, we have more pieces on the board, and these pieces are staying away for the rooks. The rooks are not strong in the middle game, but in the end game there are fantastic pieces, and that's why we see half of the end games are normally with rooks. That's why they are so important, and they are so interesting to play. Some people think they're boring. I love to play them. I love to play them when, uh, yeah. When I'm uphill, when I'm downhill, it's tougher. But they are so, so amazing to play. And that's why in the end games the rooks are so strong. But here in the middle game, two pieces are more worth than... Uh, sorry, this is the position. Castling was played. Uh, Anna has played. She played bishop b7. That's absolutely a fine move. I would guess that her opponent will play rook c1. I think that's absolutely a good move. Rook c1. And then I was hoping maybe Anna will go rook c8. I think that looks like a good move uh, just to prepare c5. And if her opponent makes something like b3, I think we were looking at that here. Maybe we can just go to c5 finally because we have a queen defending this. We have one. We have a rook two. We have the knight three. And we have these four. And uh, so we have four. And white is only attacking it with one, two, and three. So it's absolutely pos possible. So bishop b7, I was happy to see that on the board. Um, yeah, I think this is a nice move uh, because one is that you are defending the pawn on c6 but you also open up for the rook to come to c8 and after it comes to c8 defends the pawn but it also uh, helps black to push the pawn further because if black managed to play the c5 which is the whole plan for black I would say it's the most important plan for black to get this move in good conditions uh, then black will absolutely be fine. We will have the bishop pair on the board. The position will open up. So this is the fight we have been seeing has started. The fight for this very, very important square. Can white um, uh, prevent black from get the move, uh, the move the, this pawn moving? Or will black manage to get uh, the pawn to c5? It's, this is the very, very important uh, struggle uh, at this moment. And we can see that they, both of them have uh, put their forces uh, for the struggle. This is why the knight went to a4 to control c5 square. The queen went to a5 to also to control c5 square, to have some little bit annoying checks, but white castle quickly. So let's see. I just hope that Anna also soon will uh, castle uh, because that's one move she is missing. But let's see what her opponent will, will play here. And so her opponent, Anna has used, Anna has used more or less uh, half of her time. She had one and a half from the beginning. She has 45 minutes left. So already 45 minutes for uh, 11 moves. Yeah, that's not so good, I would say. That's a little bit too much time. Uh, but uh, it's not so, I'm not so surprised because I myself have had so many time travels during the years. I am a slow player and I think unfortunately Anna has a little bit uh, learned by me to use her time and uh, sometimes we need to make the decisions uh, quicker because we will need uh, the time when there are more critical uh, positions coming and this is just one one of those absolutely in this we have one of those but anna spent more than uh yeah she spent more than 20 she spent about 20 minutes for one of her move i think it was 25 and that was quite quite a lot so uh let's see now uh, i hope actually that her opponent will also be thinking they're both sitting there at the board they're both focused on the game thinking on their plans and this is actually what is very good to do when your opponent is sitting and your opponent is thinking on uh, the next move it's very good to to a little bit think of your pieces you can think about a uh, king safety who is uh, who is better uh, who has the safer king here we can see that white has the safer king who has the better place pieces 
And what would I say? I would say it's about, maybe white is a little bit better because all these pieces, uh, black, all, all white pieces are very active, I would say. All these pieces are active, but the bishop on b7 is not active. Only when c5 get in, it's active. So I would say that white is a little bit, has more active pieces. Um, we can look at the pawn structure. And what can we say about the pawn structure? Yes, this pawn move has moved already to b4, and black has backward pawn. So if black gets c5 in, black will be fine. If black doesn't get c5 in, white will be better. So um, just now, I would say that the pawn structure is a little bit better for white because of this fight for the c5 square. So these are things to think of. I think also maybe it's good to think of. If we would go into an endgame, uh, who would we prefer to be? And I think an endgame would be fine for white and black. And it would be still the same fight about getting C5 in. So these are little bit things you can think of. I also like to think of which is the piece, which are the worst placed piece on the board. And um, here I would actually say, I think bishop b7 is the worst here. This is what I think. Uh, this. So these are small things you can think of. Also, of course, to think of what is my plan go what is my plan what is my opponent going to plan what is my opponent's plan what is he going to play here and uh, because like that you can think of yeah if my plays this I will play that and so you are a little bit you have uh, you ready you have a little bit your plans ready and uh, depending on what your opponent is going to do so it's it's good to spend your time and but it's also good to uh, get more energy when you play. You need to drink. Uh, sometimes it's good a little bit to stretch yourself also, <laughs> maybe for me. And so uh, so uh, you get a little bit of energy. And that's why some people also like to go, go up uh, a little bit between the moves. So, um, but there's lots of things you can think of. And even if one hour and 30 minutes sounds like lots of time, it's not so much time. It, the time passes quickly. When you play a game of chess, uh, it's difficult afterwards to realize you've been playing for three, four, five hours. It just runs away the time. It's so, it sometimes feels so short. So that's why using the time in the right way is so important. But it also, I would say, it's so, it's so difficult. And here we see that now White is spending his time. Um, what move could I guess he can do? A rook to one, I would say. I would say that this move is very logical, one move. This move is also very logical, two move. Maybe queen c2 could be logical because the queen would be looking also here. It will also be looking at uh, here on the c line. So this could absolutely be a move he want to uh, yeah, he want to play. So let's see. But I'm happy that he's spending some time. Uh, it makes it a little bit, uh, a little bit less stressful, I would say, for for Anna, because when you have an opponent who is just blitzing out the moves, it puts more pressure on you. It, it's and this is why it's good to do it when you know the moves. It's actually good to play them immediately because you are putting pressure on your opponent. And that's what you want to do. So it's it's a psychological part part of it. And I know some players uh, who who just play for the time also from the very beginning. And it's actually it's actually the right way to do because chess is is also so so practical. But uh, why take it's time. So rook c1 is one more, queen c2 is one more, e4 is one more, b3 could be more, but it's very slow. I would say it's very slow. And actually, when, um, and you, with b3, actually, we would create a little bit hole here. So it wouldn't be such a good um, idea, I think, to play this. Also, now black has the time for c5. That would be fine. And, um, but the idea with b3 would be that you want to put the queen on e2. And so the idea would be to defend the knight, and then the queen can come to e2, uh, uh, where it will just... Why we want the queen to e2? Yeah, because uh, we want the queen to be either on e2, c2, but here on e2, with the queen on e2, we will not be no annoyed by any rook. If the rook is on e8, there's, there are two pawns between us, no problem. So we want the rook to be queen to be on e2, so we afterwards can have the rooks connected. They're a little bit speaking with each other. So this queen has to move somewhere, but it's absolutely also still fine on c2. Uh, but in general, it's better 
place on Ito, but to get there, yes, then you have to defend the knight first. So let's see uh, what more move could be. I, I don't think, yeah, you can't make a move like this. This is too quickly. We will just grab it and we will just win a pawn. So this is one of the points with Anna's uh, queen move that uh, she's controlling the fifth line. She's controlling uh, all, this, all this line and she's also controlling c5 and e5 square. So yeah, these are the moves I think is logical uh, for uh, white to play. White could actually think of taking on f6. I don't think her opponent will do that. And uh, here it's possible to take back with all the pieces. And again, like I said, maybe this is the best to take with a pawn. Even if you get your pawn structure uh, destroyed, but you will get in c5 very soon here after that move. Hmm. So, and what more? Yeah, what would I play? I would go rook c1. This is the move I would have play. I, I would like to play here. Yes, I would probably go rook c1 in a move, in a position like this. Um, this is the move I like because uh, I can see all the light knight, bishop knight, and bishop. They are playing the queen. It's important defending the knight, but this rook can understand on one file. The rook has only one good square. B5, okay. Rook B1, there is no sense because standing in front of, their, uh, of white's own pawn. But the rook on C1, I think that's such a logical move because you're putting pressure on C6. C6 is defending, but you're also controlling C5 square. Mm. So this is the move I would, uh, I would like uh, to play here. But uh, let, let's see what, uh, what uh, white will do. And I just happy white, uh, keep on uh, thinking here, um, white. And I, I, so it shows that white likes to play the move very quickly in the opening uh, when uh, um, white knows what he wants to play, but afterwards he likes to take uh, his time. So Anna is playing in Rilton Ile, the second tournament in uh, Rilton uh, Cup. The whole festival is called also Rilton Cup in the Rilton Festival. And uh, Anna is seeded number seven in the tournament. There are 130 players. Her opponent is seeded number seven on the second half. Anna has 300 points more, but should never underestimate her opponent. And I would say here that white is a bit better here, uh, but what will happen? It's so, it depends so much on what will um, happen the next moves. And if black will get this, very important pawn push in or if white will manage to stop the pawn or only let black to play it in bad circumstances then white will be ahead so uh, white will get uh, the keep the advantage so it's just a very very exciting moment and i can feel we can we can see that the players also feel that they are very careful with their moves they are taking their time and i also think that white likes to keep this queen here Yes, to defend here, but also to defend here. So uh, sometimes, if the moves, uh, this pawn start moving, uh, it could be that Anna wants to take on f3, and White also have to be careful with knight. Not yet, because we have a rook behind, which is not uh, defended, but like castling, putting the king into safety. The, talk, the rooks are talking later on c5 and later on bishop take here. So there are some uh, plans here. There are lots of plans for black and uh, so so that's why I think uh, black wants to, white wants to stay with uh, the yeah. queen and diva. Could this be a move? Knight d2. It looks very bad, yeah, because queen takes g5. You can only play it after c5. So this knight, knight needs to stay there, of course, otherwise it will be hanging. So this piece is a little bit low. Uh, because of the queen, but the knight is defending it, so it's fine like that. This piece on knight on, uh, is also a little bit low because the queen is uh, attacking it, but the queen on a d1 is also defending it. So, what? Yeah, but now he has been standing, spending more time, and I'm so happy, happy to see that because if there will be time travel here in the game, I just hope it will not be only Anna. I hope both of them will get into little time and uh, because having little time is putting pressure. Some people can play very, very well in time, uh, 
travel. Other people uh, think has a di has difficulties to find the best mode. They feel so much pressure. It's not because they don't have enough time, but because they feel the pressure of the clock. And uh, um, so, uh, yeah. So let's see. He is still still thinking here. And as you can see, uh, this is a classical tournament with classical time control. They are having 90 minutes for 40 moves. They need to make 40 moves in 90 minutes. They will get half a minute for each move. And after they have made these 40 moves, they will get half an hour extra. And all the time they have half a minute per move. And they have only made like 11, mo 11 moves. So they have spent quite a lot of time for uh, the first part. And it's because uh, there have been more action taking place, I would say, than normal. Anna has decided to make uh, some um, decisions with her pawn structure. So she has gone out with her queen. So it's White also has to, to make some decision, which is not so, so easy. And so we see how they are spending uh, their time. And it's quite a big difference to play classical, rapid or blitz. Um, I, I played the tournament just before uh, Rilton in Poland. It was a very beautiful tournament in Wroclaw, Breslau. And before starting, the, we were all asked what we like most to play rapid, class, classical, rapid or blitz. But I would actually say that I prefer rapid. Classical is very, very nice to play, but you have only one game per day. And so it feels so, so important. When you play rapid, you will at least play three games, two, three games a day. And uh, so it's a little bit more relaxed. And that's actually the time control I like most. But we are all, all different with that. And blitz with just three minutes plus two seconds is just such such a quick game. And we can see that they are so full of focus. Anna doesn't go up. I think she hasn't gone up, not even one time in the game. Maybe she feels a bit of the pressure from the clock. It looks like White is going to move. I think it looks like he's taking his decision. He's calculating. Is he going to move soon? Yes, it looks like it, but he is still there. He's still thinking, calculating. What is he going to do? I, yeah, what am I guessing? I'm guessing rook c1 is a move I would like to do myself. e4 could absolutely be a move, uh, or queen c2. These are the three moves I would guess he is doing. He will play. He can absolutely take on f6, but I think that is a very difficult move to make uh, when you're not pushed to take. Uh, so I will just show the moves. This could be one move I would, could absolutely guess. This could be another move. You are looking at the king side, you're looking down to c6, and you're still also defending your knight. This could absolutely be one move. It could also be like uh, going e4 just to try to put some pressure. But I would say that e4, I'm not so sure that this is the best move, uh, because this pawn can also be something for black to attack. And if, if you make something like this, and e5 comes, yeah, maybe this is absolutely, uh, maybe this is fine. But maybe in a position like this, we should just kick it at e4, or maybe we can even go, maybe we can even go c5 here. Yes, to go c5, try to, we are attacking here. So this could actually be a possibility to play like something like uh, this, and to play this position. If, if you go here, I think this will absolutely be, be fine here. Look so one, and probably we will go queen b6, or maybe queen a5 one of this move. And here black is fine because uh, we have this control. If you go rook e8, the only thing is we should maybe be careful about this. I'm just wondering if, if we can play this. This could be very dangerous to play here. If you come here, we have this maybe queen h5. And you see this is the this is very dangerous threatened mate here. And we try to get space here. We have these things. And this is just probably just getting very bad here, maybe like this. And maybe we'll go take the pawn, or maybe we'll try to get one more rook in. But to let your opponent sacrifice an h7 is something you have to be careful. So black will maybe try to make something like rook d8 to pin this here, and, or maybe to make a little h6 move. If you go queen e2 now here, maybe now we can play 
Um, maybe we can take on F3, I'm not sure, maybe we can even play castling here, but now black is so fully fine. So let's go back, let's go back, let's see what white is uh, playing. White hasn't played yet. Oh, I'm so happy to see that white has been spending like, could it be 15 minutes? Something like 15 minutes, I believe so. Oh, that's very, very good because we have both of them spending lots of time. Uh, Anna's opponent, Alexis Duolt, I'm, I'm, I don't speak French, I'm not sure my French is so good here, but uh, her opponent from France, he's taking his time and uh, he's getting down to the same time as Anna and I think that's is good. It also gives a little bit of rest for Anna, a little bit less pressure on her. And, but we can see that Anna doesn't want to mow at all. She doesn't want to go up at all. She wants to keep still. She wants to keep on very, very focused on the game. So yeah, th these are the moves I would, uh, I would guess. What else could you think of? Hmm. Uh, you could play a move like this, but this bishop f4, I think actually the bishop is better in g5 and f4. Now we could go to c5 because there would be less pressure on c5 when the, knight, when the bishop moves away. So this bishop is actually indirect putting a little bit control on c5 because when it, if you take here and you take back with the piece, there will be less control of the square. So let's see what he will do. What is he going to play? I'm so excited. I have had this kind of position with white. Not so much with black, actually, but white, I have had similar positions like, like this, and, uh, um, which is just a quite common plan for black to play in the queen's gamut. You can play this in different ways, but this is one of the ways uh, as Anna has played. So it's just a very, very common, I would say it's a very, quite common position, uh, but Anna took this very, very quick decision to push her pawn to just go very quickly to try to get this pawn break. She hasn't made it yet, but I really do hope she will get it, that she will get it soon and she will be able to make it in good, in good circumstances. So um, the number one in this group is rated like 2170, uh, Bergrin, uh, is a June? No, he's not June. He's about 22, 23, and uh, uh, he's the number one. And Anna is the number seven is seeded, and uh, they all have to have less than 2,200. And in the highest group, Rilton Cup, the first, uh, the, rate, uh, the number one is uh, Bartosz Soko from uh, uh, Poland. I have actually played with him. I don't think I played. Did I play classical game? I'm not sure. I played with him some blitz. And um, he's 25.50, and the lowest rated player has something like 2,000. I would believe, believe around 2,000. So they have, uh, they have. Uh, so that's the normal. They have more than 2,000. But if you're a junior or if you are a woman, you can play in that group even with lower rated. And so that's a very, very strong uh, tournament. And uh, and then. Uh, the, yeah, and they have all started. We have they have been playing for like 1:45. The first round started 35 minutes late. This is very typical in open tournaments. It's always a little bit uh, chaotic when the first round starts to get all the players to get it to give them all the information to get all the players on their places to find the pairings. Maybe there are some people who forgot to say that they couldn't come. They were s stuck somewhere. So it's always chaotic in in the first round in an open tournament. And that's why it can be uh, that the first round starts later. It also happens sometimes in the Olympiad. I remember once when I played an Olympiad 1990, we played the first round actually against Poland and I expected to play against one player. But when I came to the board 15 minutes before the round, there was another player and I hadn't prepared against him. So that was, I played against um, uh, Grandmaster Schmidt. So that was very, very tough. But so even, in uh, some, uh, but this would not happen these days, but at, at Olympia 1990, yeah, it happened. So uh, it's not strange that the first round in open tournament can be delayed. So they have been playing like one hour and 40 minutes 
and we see her opponent is thinking. He is thinking and now it doesn't look like he's going to move. Anna has actually walked up from the board. I'm happy to see that. Maybe she needs to go and take some water. Maybe she needs to go to the bathroom. So it's good and also it's just good to get your legs to move a little bit, to, to, uh, to, to move your body, so to get a little bit like energy. So that's good. Let's see if he will make his move. Uh, because this is actually a little bit psychological, sometimes when your opponent is moving, moving up, Anna went to take some water, uh, but when your opponent goes up, a little bit put pressure, maybe I should make my move a little bit quicker. So if you don't want your opponent to move, uh, some people recommend you to just to sit at the board, just to stay there, not to do anything special, just to sit and wait, and then maybe your opponent will like f keep on, concentrate, be uh, and a little bit almost fall asleep and just yeah, spend more and more time. And uh, Anna came back here. Uh, now she's she looking a little bit at the other uh, boards, um, but her opponent has not uh, decided yet what what to play. And it is a quite quite an important moment for uh, for uh, White. What White will play here? Absolutely, it's quite an important uh, moment. Uh, but um, and uh, but I'm so happy I see that White is down to 45, 46 minutes. He's just one minute ahead of Anna, and lots of players do like that. They like to they look at the time of the opponent. They don't want to have less time their opponent, but they are ready to spend so much time, so they're getting down to the same time as the opponent. But when they get there, yeah, then they have this, they feel the pressure, now I have to move. And I think it looks like that uh, White is going to move. It looks like it. But has he decided yet? Has he decided? No, he hasn't. But it can be happened any moment, any moment, and I guess so. When he has about the same time, there will be, I think we'll see a move soon now. And actually, he has been thinking 25 minutes. I think it's 25 <coughs> minutes, or if I'm wrong, no, I think it's 25 minutes, and that's quite a long time. And uh, it's, um, it's quite a long time. For Anna, I'm happy he's spending so much time, but uh, normally, yeah. Uh, uh, it, it's it's uh, good for yourself not not to spend more, and um, so they are uh, just uh, sitting there, uh, both of them. But no, it's not coming yet, and now he's even having Anna's opponent even having less time than Anna. Oh, he has less time than Anna. Let's hope he will keep on thinking for a while here. Let's hope that. And he played bishop f4. He played bishop f4. Ah, he wants so much to go knight e5. But this was not the best move at the board. This was absolutely not the best move at the board. Now Anna can do. It's actually taking away the pressure. The bishop was better play on g5 than on f4. It was better play there. But he was a little bit concerned with Anna's queen looking at the bishop. And he wants to go knight d5. This is his plan. So now Anna can absolutely go castling. Castling is fine. If knight d5 is coming, we can just take this. We can take it. We go knight d7. You go somewhere. And now we can go. We can put the rook to d8. We can go c5 if we want to. If if you grab here, we take with a knight and we can absolutely, we can take this, we can even go rook c8 and we will take on c5 and if you go something like that, we will yes, we can even play rook f8 here, queen e2 and we will yes, ah, the a pawn is moving and if you go queen b3 here, maybe you don't want to play this, could it play, I am not sure really what is happening here, but then we have a pin. And this is actually a very important pin because after you take it, we have this queen take c5 one. And the point is, if you take back, it's not only that you get two rooks, it's always, it's also going to be a checkmate. I just always want to uh, put the moves on the board. So it's just so important. So white played bishop f4, and I would say that this is the first, not the most accurate move at the board. Bishop f4. It's not a mistake, but 
it takes away the pressure and here white can choose black i'm sorry it's anna to play here she can go castling absolutely fine she can go c5 is absolutely fine she can go rook d8 is also absolutely fine i guess she can also go rook here but maybe this is i don't know if this is such a good move you can come here and here and we can even go b knight to seven this could be because after a move like this we have c5 and we can see there are pressure here the, on g2 and if you go something like e4 yeah i guess we will just take on d4 so if you go f3 to put this here we will have some is here coming back and we will just start putting pressure here and now this is just very very dangerous we can see that if you play some slow-mo, I will just say we will go queen h5, we have threats against the bishop, but we have also threats against the king. So this would actually be very, very good for black, even with the king in the middle, because there's so many open files for the black, for black to use against white's king, so this would absolutely be good. So, uh, I think so. Castling is one good move, c5 is one good move, rook c white one good move, and rook d8 is also one good move. But I don't expect Anna to go rook d8 because I think she wants to have the other rook on d8 and this one on c8. So I expect Anna either to make c5, castling, or rook c8. These are the moves, one of these moves are the moves I expect her to make. I don't like knight d5, I don't like this move because after here, you know, white will get e4 for free. This knight is not better placed here. This knight is not, okay, you, maybe you can go knight b6, but I'm just wondering to play here like this. You want to take this, what will happen? Can we go e4? Maybe this is actually fine now, and the plan is to go c5. And maybe this is fine. Actually, in a position like this, uh, but maybe knight d2, knight c4 could be a bit annoying, I'm not sure, castling, knight c4, it could be we can just go with the queen and uh, we will have, because after e4 we can actually take this pawn, after e5 we have time to defend the queen, so there is no trick, I just want you to know this, because the queen is defended by the pawn. So, and what I wanted to say, this is actually very important, uh, if you go knight b6, uh, and white takes, we take back with the pawn. And this, we get the double pawn, but this pawn is very important. One is that you open for the rook file. You see the rook becomes active. This pawn becomes a little bit passive. It's a little bit, it's a backboard pawn. You also have better control of the c5 square. So here, this is a typical double pawn in different kinds of queen's gambit. You also can see it in the slav. And normally this double pawn is a good double pawn to have. It's normally not a big problem to have this uh, double pawn, actually. So uh, let's see what Anna will play. I guess, you know, it's, I, I hope she will not play knight d5, but it could be that she plays this to get away with a knight on b6. But I just think castling is fine. If we have castling here, I think uh, rooks, yeah, it could be her opponent want to go rook c1, but maybe we can go, can we go c5 here? I'm not so sure. After here, we will need to come back down here. And now we have this jump move. I'm just wondering, uh, maybe a little bit. Yeah, now we're getting the piece. So this is not so good. So maybe uh, this is the plan. If Anna go castling, I think absolutely we see 92. And maybe here we should go bishop a6. And if you go knight c4, we will just take it and maybe we play c5 or we play uh, rook c8 first. And, and if you make, let's see, we make a move like here, we will actually play with, uh, against this isolated pawn. And we have rook c8, we have this open file, and white has got an isolated pawn. And here, black would have a more pleasant position, I would say, even if white has the bishop pair. Because we have, look at the pawn structure, we have one group here. So it's one, I don't know how to put it like this. This is one pawn island. And the other one is this. We have two pawn islands. But white has one, two, and three. So, and white also has an isolated pawn. And when you play with an isolated pawn, this one, um, 
um, it's very important to control the square in front of it. But here white doesn't have so good control of it because this knight is on a4, it doesn't control d5, and black has this plan knight b6 and knight e5. And in the end game, with less pieces on the board, it normally becomes weaker. So white will always have to defend this. Okay. Jag ska bara se till att den här vaknar till liv. So now I'm back. I'm sorry. My microphone just went away. It just went quiet. But now it should be working. So I hope really you can hear me now. And so this is not the position at the board. Let it go back. This is the position at the board. And it's Anna to move. Her opponent played this move, bishop f4. This is the last move which was played. And it was not the move, the move to put more pressure. And the plan for white, I guess, is that white wants to move the knight. So if Anna plays castling, which is absolutely a fine move, I think we will see knight e2. I think this is the idea. The knight wants to come to c4 and to put pressure on the queen. And after from c4, maybe jump in here to d6. So I think this is the plan for black, uh, for white to play. I think this is one of the ideas with bishop f4. And white, Anna now can choose to go, she can go c5 just to get this break in. She wants to do absolutely, because if you go here and you come knight e2, we will absolutely take here. Knight c4, yeah, we even have this in between move, it's such an important move. We're putting the queen on the good square, the queen was attacked by the knight. And it's threatened mate. You have to defend it. There's only one way, I would say, a free. And we keep on taking here. And if you go somewhere like this, we will, yes, put more pressure. This poor bishop, where to go with the bishop? I don't know. It's just, if you go bishop e5, maybe we will have, oh, move like queen e5. There's putting more pressure on. And if you take here, we have an in-between move. We check, you come here, and we can just take back with actually be whatever we want, but with the knight if you want to, this, because after you check there is no problem that we just hide away with the king and we have a piece up, so let's go back. This is very, very far away. So c5, after c5, I would just say that white, uh, yeah, white could go maybe rook c1 if white wants to, but if I take here, I can grab here. What are you going to do? Because if you go knight takes, we have this maybe e5 move, knight b5. We will take on f4, and I think we will take on f4, or maybe we will, yes, no, we will stop castling, we will do castling. Queen c7, and we see that this knight is not, not such a good square, because after a6, knight c7, rook c8, this knight is trapped. Why is it going to go? Queen c2, yes, attack it, and end more pieces, and there's no way to go out with the knight. Sub. It's just yes, a trap, whatever you play, you will just grab it and win a piece. So let's go back, let's go back. So, after c5, I would just say that white probably should just take here. And after taking here, could we go rook c8? Maybe we could play this move, maybe we could go castling, and after knight d2, can we just go maybe? knight t takes c5, or maybe we can go bishop c6. This could also be a possibility. The idea is that after you play like this, we have a little bit, we have given uh, white a double pawn, and we can see here, after move like knight c4, we can just grab, we can just grab the pawn, and we have a pawn more in a position like this. So this is very far, yeah. So I just would say that c5 is a very good move, and after c5, I think, White will take like this, we will take here, we can take on c5, we can go rook c8, and we can also go rook, uh, but just taking back here is absolutely the most, I would say, would be the most normal, 
castling. How will this be? With knight c4, be a little bit annoying, yeah, but we will go queen d8. The queen is just best placed here. We doesn't want to put here because you have some knight d6 and we can see there is a threat against the queen. There's also some pressure here. No, we can play this, but it just feel unnecessary to give the bishop pair, but it's possible to play, but white is a little better because of bishop pair. But let's go back. Anna has played her move and she played castle. Castle absolutely a good move. She played castle. So now with the questions a little bit, we're asking myself before, who has the better king? Now both kings are into safety. Both kings are equal, safe. And we have a position like this. I think next move, I think, will be 92. It could be 95, 95, but then I guess you will just grab it, take back, you will kick the bishop, it goes back, and we will have this move, c5, or maybe first to play rook d8, and after a move like queen c7, uh, we are putting pressure here against. Uh, h7 maybe we can even so we want to take a pawn maybe we can even do h5 because there are some threat of h4 after h3 we can go c5 or we can even go rook c8 first and again we get the position like this we come here you go maybe rook to c1 we have rook c8 and we can see that it's a little bit awkward here if you go you can go maybe queen e2 and we play this position but here I would say that uh, it's just absolutely equal, absolutely equal. So Anna played castling, she has, but she used some time for it. I would say that she used a little bit too much time. She has only 35 minutes, only 35 minutes, and only played 12 moves. Yeah, this is, they are a little bit in time travel, I would say. They are a little bit stressed of the time, not yet, but if they keep on playing like this, keep on playing so slowly, that like they have done, I, they will pr certainly get into time travel. So I'm hoping to see them. I'm hoping actually to see Anna play quickly. Yeah, that's the main thing. But now her opponent is thinking, but I think he will move his knight. I think this was his plan. Uh, when he moved the bishop, he wanted this knight to be free. So I guess we will see 92 or 95. This is one of the two moves I, I believe we will see on the board because the, it's a logical, it's, it's just a logical follow-up uh, when he play, put his bishop on f4 last move. But of course he can play other things also. He can absolutely uh, play uh, something else. Uh, he can, let's see, maybe I will take away this. Uh, oh, sorry, I wanted to take away this arrow. Uh, so we do it like this, uh, take it away like this and we take, yeah. This is for me very logical to move the one knight. Um, he can absolutely again move his queen. Rook c8 could also be possible after queen c2. I think we just can go c5 and we have seen these things. And there are no problem on h7 because this knight is also defending. If you play a move like this, we will just say thank you and we grab it. So that's not possible. And uh, so these knights are... The knight on f6 is just uh, controlling the pawn on h7. And uh, here finally you free up. And you can see, I don't think white wants to put the queen on c7 because uh, uh, the queen on c2 because now we see the bishop is looking here. There could be some plans. If you go rook c in, I guess we will just take here. We will take here. We take here, and we see that this king side is just not so well. You see, it's getting weak. We can see the pawn structure. We have one island here. We have two here. We have three. They get even four islands, while white only have one and two. Her opponent has moved. What did he do? What did he play? I'm so he played h3. He played such a slow move. He played h3. But it's such a slow move. It's not putting any pressure at all on Anna. But he didn't want Anna to go after the bishop. The, so there is a logic with a move. He didn't want to play. Let's see, we go rook c1. Then Anna could have gone knight h5 and she will change it. But this is not a good move. Actually, this is not such a good move. Uh, so 
uh, even though it's very, very tactic here. So I think this is why he played h3. It's a logic. This is an absolutely a logic move, but it's a slow move. And now Anna absolutely can play the c5. I think c5 is very fine. She can go rook c8, but there's no problem to play c5. What she has been planning for such a long time, what she has, what she really wants to do is to get this pawn moving because when it go up, this bishop, which now is passive, is just mm, looking at the wall, looking at the c6 pawn, it will be looking at f3 all the way. So if Anna plays c5, if you go rook c1, yeah, we will just grab this pawn because if you take here, we will take the knight. No, you cannot do that. So, and if you grab this here and you take back like this, we have again, remember this pawn structure, we have a tremendous pawn structure. We can go rook to c8, maybe it's actually better to go rook fc8. Now the queen is defending f3, but these pawns are very, very sad. We can also probably go maybe queen h5 just to attack here. Maybe you have to go king d2 and we can start putting some pressure here, maybe to go some uh, queen h6, and it's actually the idea is to put the knight on f4, and then after to get the bishop here, uh, to get also this bishop afterwards to d6, and to look at the king side. There's lots of way to try to attack this king uh, when the pawn structure is damaged, so if Anna plays c5, this is absolutely planned to grab the knight on f3, and to damage the pawn structure for white. So I really like Anna to go f5 and go c5 to go for the move she has been planning for such a long. And this is actually what I think she will do. She doesn't have to prepare anything more. She has this, she has so many uh, pieces. One is defending the knight. The knight, <laughs> the knight is defending the c5 square. The bishop is defending c5 square. The queen is defending c5 square. And white has only the pawn and the knight. So. I expect Anna to play c5, I expect her opponent to take him, and that we'll have a position like this on the board. And maybe here, this is a very, very interesting move to play. Because what is, what is she going, what is, because if you go here, uh, maybe you can take here anyway. And you will have to take with the pawn. Because if you take with the queen, you see the knight, the bishop is hanging, and we will just grab it. So this is a way of putting pressure on, on, on white. And if white goes here, but it's not as, this, is, this pawn structure is not as bad as we saw before, because white, for white is better to have the pawn on e3 than on d4. It's better for white to have these three pawns together. So here white has only one, two, three pawn island, and black has two. So, but this is about equal, absolutely. It's not so bad for white to play this. <clears throat> So let's see. So c5 is what I expect her to play, but Anna is thinking she's down to 32 minutes. They have only made 12 moves. Her opponent has made 30 moves, but Anna has only made 12 moves. She is taking her time here. I just think that what she has been preparing for such a long time, I just think it's time to do it. There is no problem to do it at all. It could be that she wants to go knight d5, knight b6. I'm not so fond of this move here, knight b6. It could be that she wants to play like this, and uh, I don't know what will have knight e2, and we will have maybe something like c5, because after knight c4, we can go maybe queen a4. Yeah, maybe we want to change the, the queens, and if you make a little move like this, uh, this, we have queen c6, but again, these small moves, this move makes this square weak and this pawn a bit weaker. So we always have to be careful with the pawn moves we are doing. So going here, we are saying we want to change queens, and if you change queen, we will actually, you make something like here, it could be, yeah, maybe we go rook c here, we, we defend the knight, and we have some plan, a rook a8, and to grab this pawn. So, Let's go, let's go back. But this is not the game. Let's see what Anna is playing. Uh, she has played her move. And what did she do? No, she hasn't played her move. Oh, she is down to 39 minutes, 50 seconds. It's getting so exciting. 
And uh, what is she going to do? Yeah, I'm expecting her to play c5. She can absolutely play this rook f8. This is absolutely a good move also. She can absolutely play it because the idea to put pressure here. The idea is that queen c2, yeah, we go c5 and we have pressure here. The bishop is looking at f3 and if you take, we will absolutely take here, here and probably will go I don't know if we take the knight or a bishop. I guess both of them are fine because if we go rook here, we have always this rook a c8, and we are planning to move away the bishop, and we have this pin, uh, not not a pin, but this uh, uh, we, we want to take. Uh, I'm not sure <laughs> of lengthening <laughs> with the bishop on e3. So we have some threats here. So and I can absolutely. So for me, there are only three logical moves. Uh, for me, a logic there are also knight to five, but I would say c5 one, rook d two, rook a c8 three. You could go with this rook, but it looks for me a little bit funny. Three and maybe knight d5, knight b6. These are the plans I could find for for black uh, to play. I don't like this move. This move I don't like so much because uh, yeah, if you take here, maybe yeah, maybe this is okay to play, but could it be? I don't know. Can we give a pawn here? I'm just wondering what will happen. Yes, because after this move, we have this beautiful uh, move. We are winning on exchange, and the point is, if you take it, we have this, and you have to take it. It's with check, and we will win the queen, and with that, we will win the game. So I don't like knight b6 because of knight c5. Let's see what happened, but we will win a pawn here. There will be maybe rook d6 coming. Will it be? I'm not sure. This is getting to tactics. This is getting to tactical, but this is actually very good for black because the point is, if you take here, we will go bishop h6 and we will actually win a pawn in the end. We will see that black has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and white has only six pawns. It's a pawn up for white. It, I'm sorry for black, and black is just much better. Maybe we go knight d5, knight c3, and we will attack a2. We just maybe go rook d8, or maybe knight d5. We want to put the knight here, and we want to take the a2 pawn, but we also have, and after knight g5, we go just g6, and we defend everything here. So let's go back to the move Anna has played. What did she play? She played rook fd. This is absolutely a good move. This is absolutely a good move. Absolutely, because she put in the rook on the same line as the queen. There are many pieces in between, but her plan is to go c5. So, but after a move like knight d2, what is she going to do here? Can she go? I guess she will go here. What will happen? Take, take. Can we go something like queen c2 here? No, then we have rook c8, and you cannot, put, because after a move like this, we will actually do here. Now I'm just wondering, we could take here, we could take the pawn and we win a pawn if you take here, we take here, yeah, you can come here, but we have a very rook t, yeah, this is about equal, we can absolutely do like this, but maybe we will just go down here. So we're threatening on d2 and we threaten to take the knight, we're threatening here, and after a move like knight b3, we are putting some pressure on c5 and after rook a c1, we will have maybe a way of putting pressure on b2. So a position like this is actually very, very good for, for white, for, for black, because we have an active rook, which is on the second rank. We have also putting pressure on the, on the this pawns, putting pressure on c5. So this is fantastic. So let's see, rook f8 was one of the good moves, and let's see what her opponent will play here now. I think, uh, 92. I think we will see 92 on the board. I think again this is logical. What will Anna play after 92? Can she make it move like c5? No, this could be dangerous. Knight c4. So after 92, uh, she will actually need to go bishop a6. I think she will actually need to play this bishop a6. Yes, to uh, and then of course can we take this? I am not sure what's happening. I just think uh, bishop takes here, we go c5, if he just try to pin us, we can go queen a5, and coming here, we're going somewhere, we will just take on d4, and white has to play uh, with an isolated pawn. This is just uh, a bit more pleasant for, for black, I would say. Mm. 
So let's go back. Rook f8. Anna play. Let's see what her opponent will do. Let's see what her opponent will do. He is just uh, he is thinking. He is just thinking. Both of them are sitting there at board, and he hasn't made up his mind. But he has almost ten minutes more than Anna. He has nine minutes more, and Anna's down to twenty-eight minutes. I am getting a little bit uh, nervous with the time. With yes. Okay, so we have a little bit problem with my microphone. I hope you can hear me now. I hope it's fine now that uh, you can hear me, that it works. So uh, Anna is down to 28 minutes. 28 minutes is not so bad, but they have only, she has only made 13 moves. She needs to make like 70 moves in, in 28 mi minutes, plus this half minute she get for every move. That is not so much time. And so she really has to speed up a bit. Let's see what her opponent will do. Um, it could be a move like knight d5, but I think this would absolutely just be of help for her. Knight d7, you're kicking it, and now we will go to c5, and we see it's open up for the bishop, and also after a position like this, uh, maybe we go bishop c6. Can you see? We're threatening the knight. And after taking here, we have this knight c5, and now this rook d8 is just incredible strong move, because it's a pin, the bishop cannot move, if you move it somewhere, we will yes, whoops, we will grab the queen, and if you try to make some counterattack, we don't take the bishop with the rook, we take it with the knight, and it's just a piece more, because the rook is defending the other rook. So, let's go back. So, rook f8 was absolutely a good move. And let's see what white will play here. What will white do here? I am expecting the knight to come here uh, because I think it's logical with the plan. But maybe just white thought, could it be why this? This is not a good move. This is actually a losing move because a queen d5, knight c4, you have a double threat threatening the queen but also attacking this pawn. And after queen d5, we can just grab this pawn probably in most ways. Uh, probably it's possible to play it there like that c5, maybe we can have, maybe here we have some, I don't know if we have some uh, counterplay here, maybe we have some, some activities for the pawn, it could be, but I, I just feel that uh, after 92 we don't dare to make e5, this is what we hope for, we're absolutely hoping for, for this, this is absolutely fine to play, black will be very good here, but after e5, White has this in-between move, the, where you are attacking the queen, you are attacking the pawn, and after the queen defied, this is probably the strongest way to take it, but not at all easy, not at all, and now it is getting so much tactics here, I'm not sure what is going to happen, because there is a bishop hanging, there is a knight hanging, there are lots of uh, uh, tactical things here, can we make a little bit threat here with c5? But then you have an f3 move. Can we go something knight, knight, knight h5? And if you move it away, we might have some knight b6. And this bishop is hanging. It's getting all very, very crazy. But it's a pawn up for white. So if white plays knight e2, uh, I would guess Anna would go. Uh, she can go rook c8, actually. Can she do it? What has happened? Knight c4, and she moves away her queen to d5. And because now this is actually uh, under here. Can she go queen d5 directly? No, this is actually after knight d2, sorry. Queen d5 is not such a good move because we have e4. This is very important. After this we have e5. And now, uh, ah, no, we don't have e5. I'm sorry. I'm just getting very, but we have knight b3 and we can see that the queen is trapped. We have, I wanted to go e5. I'm just, there are so many pieces hanging here. Knight d5, queen to care for everything. But knight b3, and we can see that queen b2 is not possible because the knight is taking it. This queen cannot take the pawn, cannot go anywhere. It's just trapped in the middle of the board. So queen d5, after knight d2, queen d5 would be a mistake because you would get it for free. I guess maybe we can go rook c8, but after knight c4, now queen d5 is possible because after e4, we can absolutely grab the pawn. We cannot, because when you take it, we just take back. And after knight d4, we, we, we can take on, 
d6, we can also take on f4. This will just, I think this will just be yes, very good, and we go probably c5. We have threatened mate, we also have a threat against d4. So let's go back, let's go back. Her opponent is down to 32 minutes, 32 minutes and 32 and a half minutes. He is thinking, he is thinking, Anna is also sitting there at the board. She doesn't go up now and that's not so, uh, and I understand it because um, uh, what will he do? I think she, for her it's quite clear what she will do. She go, will go for c5. Uh, if he doesn't do anything special, I would guess she goes for c5. Rook f8 was a very good move, although I expected Anna to go to c5, but she wanted to get this rook into action before she, she makes c5. Maybe she was hoping uh, Robin will make a slow move, because now c5 will come with even more power. So let's say if white makes a slow move like bishop h2, also c5 will come with very much power. So if white does make a move which doesn't uh, put the pieces in a better square, uh, I would say that c5 comes with a lot of strengths, with even more strengths after this uh, beautiful rook move, because this rook is very good on d8, looking down here towards white's queen, and later on the other rook might come to c8. So let's see what her opponent will play. It will be very, very exciting. Uh, let's see if her opponent also, her opponent Alexis Duald from France, he's rated 1764, and, um, and Anna has, she has 300 points more, but we uh, I'm always very concerned when I play against lower rated players. I actually myself prefer against prefer to play against higher rated players. It's a bit more relaxed, and uh, so uh, even if Anna is the favorite according to rating, she has to of course keep on playing, finding good moves, and let's see uh, what her opponent is, is will do. Uh, the last two moves her opponent has played have been slow moves, which mean that Anna had had time to castle, she had had time to put a rook on this very, very good file, and let's see if he will play another slow move or he will make um, something more aggressive, something will put pressure on Anna, and I would say that this is a way to put pressure, because the knight is coming to c4, and uh, so Anna, uh, c5 is not such a good move because knight c4, her queen has no good square any longer. She will have to put the queen here. This is absolutely possible to play, but it's getting a little bit, a uh, little bit. Let's see what will happen here. And we have, yeah, we can actually, she can absolutely play this position. I would say queen e2, and this is absolutely about equal. So let's see. Uh, let's see. So it's possible. But after knight d2, uh, yeah, maybe maybe bishop a6. And the question is, will Anna play bishop a6? Because she had put the bishop on b7 first. She has played bishop b7 and then bishop a6. It's not so easy to play, to move the bishop a second time. So I, I yeah, I wouldn't, after knight d2, maybe she can make this slow move. But again, white can also make a slow move, like maybe rook c8, and now again c5 is not possible, because we have knight c4, and the queen doesn't have any good square. After here we have knight d6, and there's threats against the queen, there are threats against the rook, it's a double threat, and black will absolutely uh, lose material, and after, yeah, we can go here, okay, yes, no, we don't lose material, but after the queen e2, the rook is not well placed here, there are some problems with the rook, yeah, we have to go here, we are, maybe, yeah, we can, maybe we can play this, but look here, this is getting very, very awkward, this is start getting awkward in this position, I don't know how we are going to defend this, so I hope, really, I, I actually hope after knight d2, after knight e2, I'm not so, yeah, rook c8 is a fine move, but after rook c1, uh, what is Anna going to do? Uh, it's a little bit like, yeah, she will need to go rook c, uh, bishop a6, she will just need to play this move, and to play like this, and maybe to go c5, to have a position like this, which, if you take here, we have, yeah, this is not possible, we have knight c5, and we have this double threat. So I would say that this is absolutely fine. If you go something like here, we get, we will, maybe this is about equal, but I think it's just quite fine for black to play against this isolated pawn. 
I, I, I'm not sure if there could be some. Of the 96, there could be some. Could it be something taking on E6? I'm not. It could be actually. There could be some tactics here. So, um, yeah, maybe you should defend E6 a little bit better. But this is very far away. This is absolutely very far away. And her opponent is thinking. Her opponent has less time than Anna. Rook F8. Rook F8. So we can see that Anna's opponent also like to use his time. He is not such a quick player. When after the opening, he is finally trying to find some plans. And let's see what he's doing. It's so exciting. They only have like 27, 28 minutes for this. Oh, so many moves. 17 moves to make. 17 moves to make. And I am getting so 17. No, I'm sorry. 16 moves to make. But anyway, there are many moves to make. 26 moves to make. Oh, it's very, very early for me. I can feel that. Uh, it's, it's quite it's quite early. But about 26 moves. They have one minute per move. So they don't have so much time. They have been playing very slowly. I would say both of them. And let's see what will happen. But it's so, so exciting. Let's see what her opponent will play. But I think he will use his time. I think he will not play so quickly here. Also, it doesn't look really that he's going to play. And we see that also Anna is follow focused. Also, Anna is follow focused. And so what will come here on the board? What will happen here? And now he's down to 26 minutes. Maybe he's on his way to make the move. Is he on his way to play the move? Uh, yeah, it could be. It could absolutely be that he will do that. And but he keeps on thinking. Anna is also thinking. And here is very good for her to think a little bit. If her opponent make different moves, if my opponent play knight two, what am I going to play? If my opponent play like rook c one, what am I going to play? If my opponent play knight d five, what am I going to play? If my opponent play e four, I wouldn't. This I think is a mistake because c five we open up for the bishop attacking e four after e five. If we get knight d five for free, and we can see how this um, bishop is uh, attacked, and after here we can take on d four. And this is just getting, uh, good, uh, getting looking good for black because if you take here, we might have something like knight b6 taking here. And the question is probably we take with the knight because now we have so much pressure here along this file. And I don't know what we should do. I will just say that after a move like this, we will win a piece with queen d5, uh, 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 knight d1. And we can play bishop a6. We don't win a piece, but we are winning some exchange because after here we will just grab here on d1. But this is far away. But to play e4 now would not be good because Anna has these pieces here. It would just help her. This would be fantastic for her because she will attack the pawn on e4. She would pre pressure, put pressure upon on d4. She has this rook looking down here on the d5 from behind but is very well placed there. So let's see what her opponent is doing. He, did he play now? Yes, he made a move. He made a move. And what did he play? What did he play? He made a move. And he played, he played, what did he do? Uh, I cannot see what he did. He played queen c2. Ah, so now after queen c2, c5 is a very good move here now. So I just hope Anna will go c5. c5 is a good move. So he wanted her to go c5, and I think if she goes here, she will take, you take here, and now maybe rook c8 is better. You want to take it with a pawn, and after rook c1, let's see, we will just grab here. You have to defend everything. Maybe queen b3 you have to go, but here we have, we have less more. Maybe yes, is bishop take, or maybe take, take, and rook bishop c4. I think, can we play, maybe we look like this here. Now maybe you have queen c2. I was just wondering, maybe we can just start to pin this thing, but we can keep everything under the control. And so this is not so dangerous, but this is just, I wanted to see here, rook c5, maybe after a move like queen b3, maybe we can just play something like knight e4. And we are having this hope to take with the knight, and there are double threats against b3 and here. So let's see. This is the position. He played queen c2. He wanted to get, this was a logical move. He wanted to get away with the queen from this d5. He also needed to get, put 
Uh, he also needed to defend the knight on a4, so that's why he won it. So that's why queen c2, the last move was very logical. He's defending his knight. He's also stepping out of the d line. There was some pressure here. There was some pressure here. So, uh, so that was quite logical. I think c5 is a good move for Anna to play. She can go rook a c8. I don't think this is any problem. If you go here, you can come here. Maybe uh, after knight is seven, uh, bishop g3. This pawn is hanging, and if you go something like that, maybe now there will be this little bit, and now you can go c5 because we have the bishop hanging here. So uh, yeah, so it could be. In a position like this, uh, maybe we can go c5, but this will be, I just want to see, we go check here, uh, maybe we will, we will just win a piece, but after taking here, maybe we have to take like this. Yes, of course, I took with a bishop, but of course not taking with a bishop is not possible, we always have knight, we have this move maybe here, and maybe knight takes c5 also. And after a move on, more like this, we will actually yes, get so many pawns for the for the king. You can see that we have so many. Also, knight to take b7 and hang. Everything is hanging, so it's not possible. So I just hope Anna. I think c5 is a good move to play. Rook c8 is also fine. And let's see what Anna has she played yet? Has she played? No, she hasn't played. She is just yes, she's thinking. She is thinking. So queen c2 was the last move. This was a logical move, absolutely to step out of the d line to defend the knight and also putting pressure against the c file. So let's see what Anna will uh, what Anna will do. I guess I guess Anna will do c rook c8, but I think c5 is a good move here. Yes, to do it now when she finally finally can do it. I think it's just a very good move, c5, and uh, to play it here. So I, I really hope Anna will do that, absolutely, because if you if you go something like here, we will just take it here. We can take on c5. It's nothing wrong. You can take it, but maybe rook c8 is just what we really like to do. Um, I don't know. If you go queen, queen c2, now maybe we will actually take. Yeah, we can take on f3. We can take queen takes c5. It's also possible if you would like to to play because now rook c1. We will just grab it and we will play with the two rooks. We will absolutely play with the two rooks. And in a position like this, uh, I would say that the two rooks are stronger than maybe we go rook a1. If you go something bishop c4, maybe we can just bring in the next rook. And we can see that this king is getting into problem. And he just want to show that if you make something, something very, very uh, terrible, yeah, then it will be made in one. But this is the only square for the king to run out. You have to be careful, so it's possible. But here the two rooks will be stronger than the queen. But let's go back. This is the situation. This is the time. Also, Anna is down to 23 minutes. Her opponent has 24, almost 25. Anna is down to 23 minutes. Will she play c5? Will she go rook c8? What more moves? What can I think of? Maybe she can go h6, but she doesn't have to do it. This knight is defending. So c5 is absolutely a fine move. There is no problem against h7 because the knight is defending. There is no problem at all. And this would be a mistake, probably. You go bishop c6. You have to defend and b3. And maybe, I don't know how we will take it. We could take on a4. We could actually go like this and knight to take c7. Because bishop a5, we have this a6. And bishop c6, yes, where is this coming? The bishop is just getting very, very awkward. So after bishop a6, maybe you have to come home again. But then we grab the pawn, we have a pawn more. And if you would just play like this, we have this beautiful, beautiful square for the knight. And from here, the knight will attack the bishop. It will attack the pawn. It's just fantastic there. It's so tremendous strong there. So let's see what Anna plays. What, what is she going to play? Why does she, she go c5? I just want her to go c5. She can go rook c8. But if she go rook c8, I just wonder, 92, what is going to happen here? What is going to happen here? I don't know, because of the c5, we have this knight c4 and mm, queen a6. Yeah, knight d6. We have actually, we have some tricks here. Do we have queen c4? I don't know. But I just think we have a c4 more. Yeah, it's getting so, so tactical here all of a sudden. I don't know, be taking here and we have to play something like this. And all of a sudden, maybe this is okay. I don't know. Bishop here, we go b3, and we will play with an exchange down. We're getting very, very far away. Here we have a knight to c3, but it is an exchange less. 
so and will take on a4. Um, I don't know what is going to happen here. Maybe this is absolutely fine to play for black, but let's go back. So let's see what Anna is playing. She is still thinking. She is still thinking. And I'm getting nervous here now. I'm getting so, so nervous. She is so focused. Her opponent is also sitting at the board as he has been doing, I would say, the whole game. They're both so focused, so concentrated. And what is Anna going to do? But I think, yes, C5, what you have been planning, what you wanted to do for such a long time, you can do it now. Yes, get, get this pawn forward. And if she goes C5, I expect her opponent to take the pawn. Let's see, but she is still thinking. She hasn't made her up her mind. And I think that she will go Rook C8. I think actually she will go Rook C8. But rook c8, I'm a little bit concerned because knight e5, can we now go here c5? Yeah, then we have this knight c4, and this, I don't know what is going to happen here. This is just getting, this is just getting, we have to have queen in 6 knight is here, and we have to play these t very, very tactical things. This is just getting so tactical, I don't know what is happening. We take it with the bishop. And this is just not a good move. I don't know. This is so crazy because we take on d6, you take a queen, we take here, we take the queen, we take the bishop, and we have bishop takes here, and we play this position. And how is this position? We have one pawn, is it for? But after knight b6, the knight has to go away, and we can see b2 is hanging, d4 is hanging. This will absolutely be at least equal. For, for black. This is absolutely fine to play. We have this double pawn, no problem with them. They're not under attack yet. This is absolutely fine. And Anna is still thinking. This is the position at the board. She is still thinking. She is down to 19 minutes. She is getting, getting very exciting. It's getting too exciting for me. I really want Anna to move. Her opponent had been spending some time, but I think this is a little bit showing that um, Anna hasn't played for a while. Um, it takes more time to make the decisions. Even here, when she's getting time, getting under time pressure, she still feels she has lots of time. But, you know, they have still so many moves to make, so many moves to make. Anna has to make her 14th move. Um, there are, like, uh, lots of moves to make here. And uh, she has to move uh, very soon because otherwise she will get into this time trouble with so many moves to do. And with little time, it's so easy to go wrong. So c5, rook c8, uh, this is some of the moves I expect her to play. I don't know, really see anything else. Knight b6, I don't like, because knight b6, also maybe we can, uh, knight c5, and here you will just take it. And this is just a beautiful square. So no, this is not possible. We need to keep control of c5. So yes, why not? Why don't you want to play this c5? Maybe it's, uh, yeah, I, I'm just, uh, because uh, she can absolutely go rook c8, planning c5. If you play rook c1, we absolutely have this c5. And this is fine. This is absolutely fine for her to play. But in a position after rook c8, white might play, start playing knight 2 and uh, after rook c8, we have this little bit knight 2 and I don't know, can we go something like queen h5? I'm just wondering, is this a possibility? Yes, to get the queen away, if you go knight c5, we have this c5, and now if you try to annoy us, we will just go, actually we will, we will take here, because the queen is under attack, and when you somehow move, I don't know, somewhere, we grab the knight. Yeah, this is actually winning a piece. So this is not possible. It's not possible because queen a5, we grab there. We are threatening queen, but we also have threats here. So uh, rook c8 is also a good move. I would say rook c8 or c5. And Anna, has she played? Has she played? No, she hasn't played. She has not played yet. She has, has she played? She has played. I cannot see that on the board. Uh, let's see. Let's refresh here. She did. She played. Did she play? Yes, she has made a move. But it looks like she played. Uh, she played c5. Here it came. It played. She played c5. This is absolutely good move. Let's see. I guess her opponent will take on c5. Uh, I think he will take on c5 because it could be that he makes a move like rook c8. 
But if he makes a move like Rook said, what are we going to do? Can we take on F3? You take back. Can we take on D4? I'm just wondering. Bishop C7. We go Queen H5. Or we have even a check here if we want to. We just go Queen, check here. You move your king somewhere and we can just go. Maybe we can start attacking even more. So if you come here, we have this maybe bishop or maybe queen f4 check. We are getting very close to the king side. No, you don't want to do this. You don't want to do this. After queen d2, we maybe go bishop d6. We are actually threatened mate in one. So Anna played, uh, Anna played, uh, Anna played c5 finally. I expect her opponent to take on c5. He took quickly. Now Anna should take with the knight. I would say, I would say it's better to take with the knight. She can take with the bishop. But I wouldn't like to give the bishop pair so easily. She can actually play like this. Take here and take with the bishop. She could do this. But I just think, and then, and if we have this position, yeah, she could actually play this. This is nothing wrong to play this. Uh, and, uh, but I guess her opponent shouldn't play this. Rook c8 here. Now it's a little bit pinned. Now it's a little bit, uh, now after rook c1 here, we have this knight d3. We have threats against c2, we are also double threats against knight uh, c1, so if you move away, yeah, we grab the rook, yeah, this is not possible, so this is just yes, now very good. So she can play, she can take on c5 with the bishop also, and so I guess Anna will, she will take on c5, she must take on c5, and she can choose with both pieces. With the knight, she can take with the bishop, I'm not sure what she's going to do, what would I do? I would probably take with the knight, and Anna decided to take with the bishop. This is nothing wrong with this. Uh, black has to, white has to take back. White has to take back here. And after that, uh, uh, Anna played it quite quickly. So this was her plan. And um, let's see what her opponent is going to do here. Yeah, yeah, he will absolutely have to take. We will see this. And now the plan for Anna is to take here. And now, if you go a move like rook d1, I just guess that we can play this and we have a pin here. And this is a little bit like getting nasty. Knight e1 here. What is getting here? We have, you see, we have this pin. And this is just not what you want to do. We have pins here against the queen. We have pin here against the rook. This will absolutely be winning a piece, f3, and we just grab it with a piece up. So Anna played bishop takes c5. This was very exciting what she plays. And now I'm sure she will go knight takes c5. This is her plan. And um, just to put pressure, to put pressure on her opponent, because where is her, her opponent going to go? Where is he? Uh, because if you take with the knight, there is threats against d3. He will need to move the... It, it could be also that Anna wants to take an f3, but I think this is a little bit too quickly. She gives the bishop pair. Don't give the bishop pair yet. Not yet. Not yet. So I really hope that she takes on c5. Knight takes c5 is the move I want to take, because after here, she yeah, yes, like rook a8, and you see this queen doesn't have good square. If you come here, we have bishop here. We just start moving, and where the queen has to move somewhere, and we win the piece. So the queen is getting very awkward. So I just hope that she take with the knight and c5, because after knight takes c5, the best move white can play is to bishop c4, and now if she wants, she can take on f3, but she doesn't have to do it yet. So just stay with the knight, because after this, this is very tempting move. But after rook c8, this is just very, very good for her. Let's see, rook fd1, maybe we can go knight d3, the queen have to move somewhere, and we will go I don't know, bishop d5 could be absolutely a good move also, not at all, because the knight is hanging, we take on f4, taking back, and maybe we have uh, getting the other piece here. We have some g3 more, and this is perhaps about equal. I'm just wondering if we can play something, something more aggressive here, but knight takes c5 is what, and she has played, she played, and what did she play? She played knight takes c5. She played knight takes c5. Oh, that's such a good move. And this was his plan. There is, white has to be careful here. White has to be careful. And I would say that it's not so easy for white now what to do with white in this position. Uh, because this is a very, very tempting move to play. This is very, very tempting. Anna could go bishop c4. But if she goes here, this is a little bit too quick. Bishop d5, then the queen can 
escape here. So I would just say, after bishop c4, rook c8 is a good move. And because now we have this knight d1, knight, uh, knight d3, annoying move, and it's, it's just good for you. I was just thinking, if you go here, we have queen d2, what will happen? We have, of course, knight d4, because this is not possible. This is not a mate. Black can just take it back because the queen on a5 is also defending the rook. So it's important to feel, to see that, how the pieces are working together. This rook on d8 is putting pressure on d3. This knight is putting pressure on d3. And now uh, black has to play probably this move. And now the question is, will Anna go here, then bishop e2, and, well, she wants to play something like this. I don't know how will be this be knight b6. This is actually getting quite nice, I would say. This is getting quite nice. After b6, we have this little a6 move. And the point is that we want to get the bishop here to d3. So this I'm getting to like. So after, I would like to say that maybe you can go knight d5 here, but maybe bishop e2 is also a good move, maybe knight, but maybe this is possible to go knight b6 to play like this, and after bishop e2, we are having some, I don't know, where is the queen going? The queen is just getting a little bit, doesn't have some minus square, maybe queen e1, but now again we have knight d3, and this is just getting good because we have this and the rook is not coming out. So there are peace activity here. Now white played, what did white play? White played bishop e2. This I would say is the most logical move, but it's not the best. And now Anna has this rook a8. I just hope she will go rook a8. This is the strong move because this queen is not well placed here on c2. Rook a8. So let's hope that Anna will play rook a8 because we can see that this the queen has not sent many good squares, so after this move, maybe we can go with some rook f d1. And what is going to happen here? What is going? Knight d3, and the queen has to go. Maybe queen b3, and we will. I am just wondering how is a position like this? Maybe this is a little bit. Is this a little bit better? Yeah, this could be better for black because you are having uh, pressure here. You have. Pre you have uh, you have a rook on the second. This pawn is not so bad on f4 because black has a very good square and white has a very good square on e5. Let's go back to the position. Uh, let's go back. So I hope Anna play rook a c8. I hope she go rook a c8 here. This is very important to put pressure on this queen, to put pressure on this queen which doesn't have so many good squares to go. Rook a c8 because where is the queen going? And I just wanted to say after rook c8, queen b1 is not a good way of escaping because we have bishop e4. If you come here we have knight, knight to b3, maybe we have knight to d3 also. No, we don't have here, but maybe knight free is a good move. It looks like a very good move. And if you go here, we have this knight d3. There are threats against b2, threats again. And here we have this taking the piece because there's the double threat against the queen. And you have also taken a piece. So let's see if Anna played this very rook a8, this fantastic good move. I would just say that this is very tempting and rook a8 is very tempting. But I hope she goes rook a8. This is what I really hope she will play here. Really, really hope that she's going to play. It could be that she play also knight to e4, but rook a8. And it's just so nice to have it. After we have a move like this, knight d3, bishop c7, bishop c1, you can just take on c1. Because if you take on a5 here, we will just take here, you take on d8, and in the end we take the bishop, and we have won a piece here, and this is just winning for black. So let's see, let's see, Anna is down to 12 minutes, and she's down. She would like, she would need to have the time she has been spending before. She would need it now. Now there is this fantastic good move, rook c8. Rook c8, so I just hope Anna will play rook c8. I'm hoping for that. So let's see if she will do it. If she doesn't do it, white will probably escape. It will be about an equal position. But rook c8 will put so much pressure on her opponent. Her opponent has the bishop pair, but the queen is not very well. Let's see what she did. 
What did she do? And she played Rook C. She played this very good move. Oh, that's so nice. Really so nice. She needed to take her time. She has 13 minutes and she has like uh, 13 moves to make also. Uh, 17 moves. She has 12 moves to make and she has uh, 12 moves. No, 12 moves. I'm so sorry. 22 moves to make. So you see, it's so little time. So she has about one minute per move with a half minute extra. Rook a seed was a very good move. Now there is pressure. There is lots of pressure on white because this queen is not so well placed. This queen is not at all well placed. And we go bishop here, probably we can just play something like knight d3 because we cannot take it. It's the pin here. And if you go something like rook fd1, maybe we can go, yeah, maybe bishop e4. And we see there is Looking at this, it's looking also knight f4 is a threat. No, this is just tremendous. And if you try to defend everything with queen b4, we have knight c5, and this poor queen is all of a sudden, it is trapped. We have a queen trapped here. The queen can cannot go anywhere. If you go queen d1, we will just grab it with a rook, and we cannot take the pawn either because we will just take it back. So it's a beautiful queen trap. So Anna played this rook ac, this fantastic move. And it's also such a nice move because if you look at the peace play, we can see both kings are safe, but please, peace play. All others, all, well, other, all pieces, all black's pieces are playing. They're all on active squares. And also her rook, both her rooks are playing. And white doesn't have got the both rooks to play yet and has problem with the queen. The queen is under big attack here. And the problem is if you go something queen c4, we have this move. And if you go queen c4, we just move away the knight. And the bishop on e2 will be gone. You will lose the bishop because you have to move the knight and the queen. And when the queen moves, we will just grab it. So there is no, it's not possible to play like this. So what is white? I think white will spend some time here. I think absolutely white will spend some time here because white feel that white is under pressure. And the best white can do here is to put the rook on d1. This is the best white can do to put the rook on d1. Rook c1 wouldn't work because we have this beautiful knight d3. We have to then give the queen like this. But in a position like this, we will absolutely have a fantastic position. Maybe we will, we will play. I don't know. Maybe we'll go like this. Maybe we can go e5 or just h6. And after we will go queen h5. But this is just much better for, for yes, maybe we'll go bishop b3 here. But maybe we go somewhere, you go away here, and we are just putting pressure. I just want to see how we can put the pressure. Queen f6, we have attack against here, but we have also attack on b2, so maybe we can take the pawn here. The queen is just uh, stronger than the rook and the bishop, uh, so this will just be very good for black. So white is under pressure here. White is absolutely under pressure here and I would believe that white will spend time before he's going to move because there are some uh, um, threats with moving this knight absolutely with moving this knight or oh just going bishop e4 could also be a threat so it's not so easy what to do if if you go i3 we will absolutely go I can show it I just want to show here the queen will actually you're not under threat because now you want to change queen. But this end game is not possible to play. I guess we will go knight f e4. You, if you come here, we will just, yeah, we can go knight e2. We can also go knight e4. There is so many things we can do here. But this pawn will become a monster and we will win the c2 pawn. So maybe even knight e2 is good. I think also even knight a4 could be a possibility also to play. There are different things here, but this is just very, very good for, uh, for black because this pawn is becoming an enormous big pawn. This is a very weak pawn, which white black will just put under more pressure. So let's go back. This is the position. What is, what is white going to do here? Uh, what is white going to play here? I, I don't know. It's not at all easy for a looks here. Have they, oh, he's down to 22. I thought he had less time, 
But Rook A8 was the last. Yes, he's down to 18 minutes. There was something wrong with the clock. He's down to 18 minutes. Anna has almost 13 minutes, so he has five more minutes than Anna. But he has a difficult position. Anna played uh, because his queen, his queen is not standing so well. He has made his move. What did he do? What did he do? He 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 played queen. What did he play? He played. Queen B1. Did he play this Queen B1? This was the move he played. Did he go Queen B1? Let's see. But Queen B1 is not the best move. Was it played on the board? Let's see here. Can we get it on the board? I think it was Queen B1. But if you play Queen B1, Bishop E4 is a fantastic move. And now White Black will win Materia. Let's see. What is the last? What did he do here? Did he go Queen B1? I cannot really see it on the board. Or did he go rook b1? I'm not sure what happened. He played something, but I cannot see it here. Let's see what he played. He played queen b1. But now, queen b1, now bishop e4 is a very good move. And Anna plays it quickly. It comes here. She played it quickly. I will actually move it out here. This is what she played. I can see it. She played it. This is a very good move. Let's see. She played bishop e4 because now the queen is under pressure. He put his queen away, but the queen cannot escape. Anna has a white square bishop. She can attack the queen. The queen has to hide out. Not hide out. Has to come out of the where it was hiding. And it can hide away in E1. But Anna can attack it again. And you see all Anna's pieces is playing. She's attacking it. The queen has to move. Has only two squares. To D2, we will grab the bishop. We win a piece. And if it goes to D1, we will grab the pieces, the bishop, and we'll win another piece. So she has to, black has, black, sorry, white has to take. And you take back. And you see the rook is not coming up. White, black is winning an exchange. And that means black is having a winning position. We have so many open files. The rook are tremendous here. And the only thing black has to be careful with is just try to uh, change the rook, change the queens. More than anything else, change the queens and the end game. The rook will be so much stronger than the bishop in the end game. So this is actually very well. So Anna played this beautiful rook a8. Bishop e4 was played. And her opponent is thinking, he is down to 70 minutes, he's thinking Anna, she used, uh, she used only half a minute for this move and that was absolutely good. She used only half a minute for the move. He has actually only uh, one, uh, it doesn't really matter where he goes, he can go queen c1 or queen a1, but wherever he goes, 93 will come actually after the. But queen c1 has a trick. You cannot go knight b1 would actually lose the game because you take. And with take on c1, you take the queen. So it's very important that after queen c1, I don't expect him to play. You go knight d3, and again, you have this. You have attack on the queen, you have, and the queen has to move somewhere. And if you take it, we will yes. Uh, we can actually choose, we can take it here, we can take the bishop, we can also take here, and when you take back the something, we just take, uh, actually probably we take like this, and we take uh, like this. And after a rook here, th this looks dangerous because of bishop c7, but we have something very important. We have an in-between check here, and after the king is moving, we will just grab the rook and it's winning. So, but let's go back. This was many moves. Anna played this very, very potent, very, very strong move. Bishop e4, the queen is still under attack. Its queen is again under attack. The queen has to move somewhere. There's not possible to do anything else than moving the queen. And what did he do? He played queen e1. He played queen e1. And now I hope really he played his queen e1 move. I just hope. Anna will play knight d3. This is su yeah, such a good move. She has to go knight d3. Really, really hope she will do that. So this is what happened on the board. We can put it up. 
this is actually what happened on the board. Anna is, let's see the take, and here it came. She played knight d3. We had queen e1, and we have knight d3. Anna is playing all this good move, all this best move, all the time. And now she will win material. She will have a winning position. Of course, after that, you have to win it, but she will win material. She played this beautiful knight d3. This is what is on the board. We, I, for some reason, it takes a little bit of time here. Uh, somehow it takes, now we have it, it came now, and now again the queen is under attack, there is only one thing white can do, and it's to take the knight, and, uh, uh, and we can see that uh, white is thinking, but white only can take the knight, moving away the queen, wherever you go, there will be uh, taking the bishop, and at the same time there is an attack on the queen, because you cannot take it, we yeah, actually, we can make an in-between move, but we take it back. The bishop is defended, and if you, in this position, if you go to the D-line, yeah, we have seen it lots of times, we take the bishop, we are attacking the queen, and we win a piece, so this is also not possible for white to play. So white only have one move, and it's to take the knight, and when you're taking the knight, black just take the knight back, and will take on f1, and this is just a winning position because we will win the rook and if you go something like bishop d5 you can you you don't really have to be worried about this we can just grab it here you're coming back and in a position like this we will just plan to go queen c4 uh, we just want to change queens this is the only thing we want to do just to go if you go something like here we will go queen c4 the plan is simply just to change the queen and uh, maybe something a5, and we can see how we are controlling all the files. Maybe something f3 will come, but we can go queen d3 even, and if a move like this, we will just go queen g6 and be keeping everything under control. So let's go back. This is the position. Knight d3 came. Uh, black, white is thinking. White only has one move. White only can take on d3. There's something and nothing else white can do. I would say the white has to take. I was yes, one. can we play here? Maybe can we go queen f5? Maybe this is not so good because we're letting, um, we're letting the bishop, the b4 pawn falling. No, so don't do that. So uh, we have to have, white is still thinking, but white has to take, we have to take, and I guess bishop e 5 is the best chance. Now actually, uh, maybe even queen b5 could be more, or maybe queen, not, but I don't know, I think queen d5 is unnecessary. Just to take it, and if, if we take back, because we threaten the rook, we take back queen f1, and we play this position, which is absolute. Queen d5 looks like a very good move, and if it goes something like queen d5, we can play. I just think a5 is a good move, just to keep everything under control, and then now the plan is queen c4, or even, even queen c4 here is possible but maybe just a5. Let's go back, let's go back. And this is what happened. He took on d3, Anna took back with the bishop. Let's see what he's going. I think he will go bishop g5, maybe bishop e5 is also possible. Uh, maybe he will even go bishop e5, could absolutely be a possibility for him to play. But then Anna can move away her knight here, so uh, this is just a uh, less uh, strong move. I think actually, uh, for him, the best is to do this, um, uh, to go bishop g5, uh, but he played knight d4, he asked, did he play knight d4? Uh, did he play, I cannot see it, it looks like knight d4, but what is this? Now he's going to lose material, Anna can go e5 directly if she wants, or she can take on f1. Ah, so this is not, no, she is not losing material, we have knight b3, but queen d5, bishop g5, and, uh, but there will be so much activity here. Even if you can take this, there is no problem. You want to try something like this. Uh, we keep, defend the king, and if you take this pawn, maybe you can go rook a1. We can do lots of different uh, things here. We can play rook take b2, and I just want to show something. If white plays something very slowly, we have this uh, maybe rook a8, and if you go something like queen b6, we have rook take b3, 
when the plan is to take care and we can take care. So let's go back. Anna is her move to move. The last move was very surprising. He played knight d4 and I would just go, I, I would take on f1 or I would go, I would go e5 probably, probably I would go e5 directly. I just think this is a good move. e5, knight b3 and I would go queen b5. You have to move the bishop somewhere. I go bishop f1 and here you will change queens. And this is what you want to do. You want to change queens and rook c2. So actually, I think e5 is the move I really like most. I like this e5. You cannot go knight f5. Wow, whoops, we grab it. So I like e5. You have to go knight b3. And now we go queen b5. We keep everything under control. Okay, you can go some a4 move if you, if you want to. But we can go knight d5. We are attacking the bishop, the knight, and uh, there is not possible to play this. I will just, there's so many, everything is hanging. We can take on f4, we can also go rook b8, and we can take on b3, with their, all the pieces are hanging. So I just think e5 is the best move. Anna is down to 11 minutes, 20, um, uh, and I like e5 many times. Uh, because this rook, you see, it's still, it cannot move. There's no hurry to take it. You can go e5. If white goes attacking the bishop, yeah, then we grab it and we take one of the pieces. So it's not possible. So e5 is a move I like. And after knight b3, I like queen b5. Because uh, when you play, now Anna has played. Let's see what she did. What did she do? She played e5. Ah, she took, took an e5. I would actually say that, yeah, this is also fine. Uh, if you go knight f5 here, we will actually just yes, take on f4. So this is absolutely, knight b3 is the best move. Now she has to go queen d5 and bishop g5 will have to be played. And now we can go maybe queen c2 or rook c4. Let's see what did she play. She played e5. I think that's a very good move. And uh, now her opponent has to go knight b3. Her opponent has to go knight b3. That's the only move her opponent can play. Otherwise, uh, her opponent will lose a piece, so uh, there is nothing else he can do than it is. So, knight b3, queen d5, and then it's good, this move is very good because you have the queen in the center. Now he played, and what did he do? It must be, yes, and now he went bishop g5. Let's see what Anna is going to do here. I just think uh, rook c2 could be a move here, but maybe then if you after rook c2, could it be that he will go queen a6 here? Uh, after rook queen a6, he could absolutely go here. And let's see, rook d6, queen take a7, and we go something like a6. And let's see, let's see, things are happening very quickly here. Uh, he played bishop d5. I actually expect Anna to go queen c4 in this position, but after queen c4 later on you have rook c1. I am not so sure. Yeah, I expect Anna to go maybe queen c4 here. Uh, let's see what she is going to do in this uh, position. Let's see what she will do. Uh, this is, it's just, uh, it's a winning position, but there's still queens on the board. So uh, she just has to be a little bit careful. Maybe queen d1 is a good move also. But then I think we will see rook queen e one the pawn is hanging. And you can go maybe something like a5. Oh, in a5 the pawn is still hanging. So maybe now queen f5 and you will just uh, keep it like this. But then we will, will we see something like f3 perhaps. Or oh, f3 is very dangerous to play. Because after taking here, there's only one check. We will just go maybe king f8. And if you try to attack here, actually we can go queen e2 and we are getting some nasty threats here. So this is why it's very dangerous always to move the f-pawn. To move the f-pawn with a rook on the seventh or a rook on the second, this is very, very dangerous. So let's see. So now it's uh, Anna to move. She has 10 minutes left. She has 16 moves to make. Uh, but she has a very, very good position. It's a fantastic position. Let's see what she will do. I think she will go queen c4, queen d3. This is what I think she will do. Um, but also a5 is a good move. I would say a5 is a very fine move to play. Uh, I just think rook c2, but a5, why not a5? I think this is good. And if there comes something here, we can just... Um, we can yes, maybe we can kick you, we can go rook, we can actually play a move like this. We're not scared. If you go here, we take here. And if you if you take here, let's see, you take on f6, we will just start 
putting pressure on this knight, this poor knight. You have check here, but the king is escaping. The king is just escaping. We can put the king uh, almost here on e8. It's also absolutely fine. And the knight has nowhere to go because after this, we will just go queen e2. We can actually give check, but queen e2, we are threatened mate here now. This, after a move like queen f6, we can take on c1 if we want to. Everything is, yes, I will just always show you to them. So, like this. So, let's go back. So, it's another move. I just think a5 is a good move to play. Uh, she doesn't have to be worried about uh, this pawn. a5 is a fun, very good move to play. Uh, what more can she play? Rook c2, she can go queen d3, queen c4. Uh, she can also go, if you want, queen a6 is possible, but I don't like queen e6 so much. Uh, because queen e6, maybe you will go queen b5. Yeah, you, she can play this, rook b8. She can absolutely play, play like this if she wants to, but the rook is become a little passive. This is absolutely also possible. In general, the main thing for Anna is to keep control. She doesn't have to play the best pieces, but the uh, best pieces, the best moves, but she has to play moves because she has only eight minutes left. She has to keep going. She has to make some moves and she can make okay moves. Just keep the position. Just try to change the queens. Just try to change the queens. This is absolutely what she has to do. Just try to change the queens so she can make some small moves. Rook c2 is absolutely a good move. What more can be a good move? Uh, rook c2, a5, I like. Um, she can make lots of things. She can even go h6 if she wants to. Everything is fine. There's absolutely no problem with lots of moves, but she will need to make a move. And I just don't want to see her losing because of time in this fantastic, very, very nice position she has. So let's see what she will play here. She's so focused. She is so focused. Her opponent is looking at the other side. Uh, I guess he's not so happy. He's having an exchange down. He's hoping something that will some, uh, yeah, that something will save him. But Anna has everything in her hands. Everything depends on her. I would say that I like a5. I feel I like a5. And if you go uh, take here, take here, queen a5, you can actually go lots of thing, things. You can even go rook a, but you can even go here. This is that you take this is absolutely what you dream about. You want to play this end game. You want to play it because after b3, look at this. We will go here. We can go here. We can actually go rook d2. Oh, press on this, but we want to take here. Oh no, this is yes, good night for for uh, white has to come here and maybe in a position like this. I want to see we will coming here. This night, why is this night coming? This night might be getting lost very, very quickly here. Knight b7, this night is just very, very bad and the rook has to keep it. So this, in a position like this, we have gone very far away, but I want to say this is winning. If we take away one pawn, because we have equal pawn, if we take away one black pawn, white could fight. But with equal pawn, this is winning. So let's see, Anna has to play. She has to play. And she has to play. Oh, this is getting a little bit exciting here. Oh, a little bit is getting very exciting. But only because of time, not so much because of the position. I would just say, because of time, uh, she has such a nice position and just to change queens, to keep her pieces active or to keep the pawns. She can even be uh, a little bit passive if she wants to. So even a5 is fine. If you come here, we can go queen a6, we can go rook a6, you're coming here. We can play something like rook is here if you want to or we can go queen d6, keeping everything under control. So a5 is a fine move. And if take, take, I guess this is what she's concerned. She can play rook c2, she can go rook c6, uh, she can play so many things. She can go king d7, what is actually what I like to do, because the king is coming a little bit closer. And um, if you take here, oh, I say, I'm so happy. I got to change the queens. I want to change the queens. So let's, so, but let's see what she will play. She's down to five minutes now. She's down to five, but she's on her way to move. She's on her way to move. And let's see what she is going to do. Uh, what is she going to do? I don't know. I expect her to go queen d3, queen c4, something like that. Uh, but uh, uh, queen d3, queen c4. 
but black, white will keep the queens. Because when you are down material, you need to change, you need to keep pieces, you want to change pawns. When you're up material, you want to change pieces. And here, more than anything, you want to change the queen. Because the queen is the most tricky piece, the queen is the most dangerous piece uh, for the opponent to play with against your, uh, your king. So the queen is the piece you want to change more than anything else. Anna was on her way to move, now she's down to four minis. She has to move. Now it's coming and she played rook d6. She played rook d6. This is absolutely a fine move. This is absolutely a fine move. Uh, nothing wrong with that. I guess we will see. And there's actually a very good plan because if you want to get the sea land, you will not, you will get the sea land for one moment, but we will take it away. And now this is just finished. We have managed to change the pieces. We are not worried about anything. This knight is just very, very, um, very passive piece. The knight is a slow piece and the rook will just, you know, it will just win everything with rook b1. Let's go back to the position. So Anna played rook d6. This was a good move. This was a good move. And I don't know, she wanted to avoid her opponent to get a uh, get with the piece here to a6 and actually now she has a plan she has a plan to go knight e4 she's playing against the bishop if if, if there is a queen e2 now i'm sure anna will go knight e4 i think she will go knight e4 here and bishop h5 she, it could even be that she goes g5 even this she could play it it could be but there is queen g4 could this be some dangerous here uh it could be but this is still this is still, yes, can you see this fantastic pin? This is just very, very good for her still. But I don't think Anna, so it could be, I think Anna will go knight e4. And if it be bishop h4, I think we will absolutely will see it. Maybe queen d3, but we will have queen g4 here on the board and something like rook c2. And this is getting yes. And there's no no mate but it's a little bit after that she wants to go a little more like h6 and rook g6 let's see what uh what is happening here now what is so uh he played knight e4 and anna's down queen e7 anna can absolutely go queen d3 is also a good move but then we will see queen e4 she played a5 a5 is absolutely a good move this is absolutely a good move she wants to put pressure um, uh, she wants to put pressure, and we can see that this, uh, that, uh, that the queen doesn't have any good square. And with a5, yes, she wants to defend the pawn. Maybe she has some a4 move coming on. So a4 is actually a big threat here. If her opponent makes, let's see, like this, we will just go a4. I, we would just go a4, and you can see this knight is lost. It's just very, very lost. Okay, you go something like that. We will come here, but this knight is just so, so weak. We will just come back after queen e4. We will just keep this check, and we will win it. So this is actually a threat. Let's see if our opponent has played. He is thinking uh, the only problem in this position. Anna has played very nicely, very good moves. The only problem in this position is that... Uh, the only problem this position is that she has less, uh, she has less time. I think he will take on f6 because there is a little bit uh, tricky here. Anna only can take rook, take f6. After this move, there will be queen g4 check. So she has to play rook takes f6 and now he can go queen d1. But here Anna now, maybe I think she will go rook queen here. And we have a move like queen b5. There are some activities, but we can go uh, we can yes, maybe we can go. Uh, yeah, th th this is actually uh, what I think her opponent will play here. Maybe rook g6. We are getting threats against the king. This is actually winning in the, on the spot here because f3. We can actually yes go queen take f3. You have to go rook d2, but you know anything is winning here because we have the rook defending on the last rank. So if he plays, if you take on f6, there Anna has to take back with the rook. She has to take back with rook. This is just very, very important. This is very, very important. So uh, let's see what he will play here. But now uh, Anna played a5. I thought Anna would go knight e4, but she wanted uh, it to be, uh, uh, she wanted to defend her pawn. 
and let's see what is going to be her next move in this position. Uh, her next move is actually this is A4 is a very very strong fret here. A4 is a very very strong fret uh, to play here so I don't know what her opponent will do. Um, I guess he will take on F6 but um, hoping that Anna will take with the wrong piece uh, but if she has taken back with the rook she's absolutely fine. She's absolutely fine. And uh, so in this position, why can it activate his rook? Because if you go here, we will just change. I, I change here and we will go queen d1 and winning on the spot. So this is not winning more material. And you cannot go with the rook uh, if I was played. You cannot go with the rook to d1. Of course, we will play it. So something has been played here. What happened? What was happening? Uh, he took and rook d1, yeah, I expected that. Now queen c4 is not possible because after this we will have a mate here and I will absolutely lose, lose the game so this is not possible. So I expect Anna to go queen a8, this is a very good move, queen a8. I just hope Anna will go back with the queen on a8 because what I like with the queen, you defend a5, you want to go a4 but you also have these tactics here, uh, sorry, not against f2, but against g4. So I like this move, queen a8, and you also have a little bit extra control on the last rank. So I like, and you defend the rook, so queen a8 is absolutely the move I would play myself, I would absolutely play this move. Anna has played already, and I, I think she played it. She played queen a8, she played this good move, and it's so good, because the queen defends the pawn, the queen also defends the rank, the last rank, and the queen is also defending the rook, but the queen is also looking at the king side, and this is the fantastic, with these long rank pieces, like the queen, like the rook, like the bishop, a knight can stand on the queen side and look at the king side, only the knight stands in the center, you can look on the queen side and the king side, but the knight is a slow piece. And so her opponent has played. What did he do? What did he play? He played something. I don't know what he did. He played something and I cannot see. Did he go f3? Queen. C4. C4. No, queen, queen b5. Did he go queen b5? Let's see. What was played here? Queen d3, h6. So this is a very important move. And the reason is that now there is no mate. Because if Anna in this position would have played this, we'd have had some tragic. We would have seen a mate here. So this is why Anna makes these little, little pawn moves. She gives air. Now there will not be any way of mating her on the last rank. And queen d3, the idea with queen d3 is actually if Anna go rook g6, white, black will, uh, white will be able to go e4. So this is why he played this move. But Anna now can play, uh, she will not be able to control the d file, but now her next move is actually a4. a4 is a very, very strong move here now. a4, and so I don't know what her opponent is going to do. Because this is why she also played a6, because after a4, knight c5 is not possible any longer, because you will grab it. In this position, if Anna went a4, maybe the knight could be more active. And then, if you take it, we had this mate again. We had this mate again. The mate on the last rank, the mate we always have to avoid. And this is why Anna played this little move, which is such a good small move. A small move that we have to play. She is now down. Oh, she has four minis, so it's better. But she still had 12 more moves to make. 12 more moves to make. So she has four minis. She has 10 minutes for these 12 moves. So it means that she has less than one minute per move, but she has such a good position. She just needs to keep control of the position. She doesn't have to win before the 40th move. Just keep everything control. She hasn't exchanged more. There are equal pawns. Uh, she has good pieces. Her king is in the safety. The only thing she really wants to do is to enter with her rook. So Anna's plan, and she doesn't have any weaknesses. The only weakness, no, she doesn't have any weaknesses. Her plan, queen b5 came here now. Now queen b5 came. He was so, but now I would say rook g6 would absolutely win. Uh, I would say it would almost win on the spot. Rook g6. 
I think would yes be a very good move, but he can also go a4 because after a4, where is the knight going? If you go knight d2, we have a fantastic pin. Now, this is going to be, we will just win this piece, uh, we will just probably win this piece, or maybe you can help with the knight, with the king, but this is just the pin you don't want to see. So, and if you go maybe knight c5, I guess we will go maybe, maybe we go rook g6, maybe we can go rook c6, we can also go queen, queen c6, and we will get what we want to have, we want to get like this. I just want to show you that this is just coming here, this is just uh, hopeless for, for, uh, for white uh, to play. So I guess you have to go here and now, uh, yeah, we will just take this. But this 4 against 4 is just winning. 4 against 4, we will have this. But this is absolutely winning for black with 4 against 4. You needed to take away one pawn. If you would take away this pawn and you can defend the pawn, then you can make uh, a draw. But 4 against 4 is the winning. So let's see, I, I expect Anna to go queen g6 here. This is the move. I expect Anna to go queen g6. Maybe we will see queen d5 here. Uh, let's see. But a4 is also a good move. So he played this move. Queen g6, queen d5. It could be possible. Um, then we will see maybe a4. Uh, let's see what he's going to do here. I think, um, let's see what he's going to do. Maybe queen d6. Queen c2 is also a very good move here, uh, getting to the second rank. The point is that Anna has only two minutes left. Oh, I'm getting a little bit nervous. She has only two minutes left and she has the 12 moves to do. She can absolutely go rook c2. Absolutely, rook c2 is absolutely a fine move. And rook c2 is absolutely a fine move to play. There is no, uh, there is no problem. She's keeping the last rank. There, probably you have to go queen here. And now maybe we can just go some activities here. And this is just getting off the queen a5. Yeah, we will just take it here. And we can just do something like, I don't check. Let's go, go to the position. What was, what did Adam play? Has Anna played? No, she hasn't played. She's, she did play. And what did she do? She played rook c2. She played rook to c2. Yeah, this is absolutely a very good move because if you grab the pawn, we will just take it, we will take it, and we will get the two rooks to the second rank. We will take all the pawns. There is no mate because we made this little pawn move. So the king can escape and it's just winning. So she played this very, very good move, rook c2, and there's no way that white can go uh, threaten rook d8. So rook f2 is coming very much. And if you go f3 here, I guess if you go f3, maybe we can just play take here, check, and we go queen ft3, check, and the poor king, uh, we go here, we can just take it, and there is only one check, but we escape, and there is no more hope for after a move like this, this will absolutely be a mate. I guess we start with king f2 here, and we will go maybe something like this here, and we have, uh, I am so, uh, yeah, we have this beautiful mate like this. Let's go back. So she played here, so after f3, it's just a take on g2, so I don't know, I think just you have to go, um, um, yeah, I don't know what he's going to do here. I have no idea what he's going to do here, uh, because maybe he played rook d2 and now queen c8. I guess maybe Anna will take, but queen c8 is such a good move. Queen c8 is a very good move uh, to play, so he defended. But you can also, uh, I, I think, yes, queen c8 is such a good move because you threaten so many checks everywhere. So I like this, I like this move here. Uh, what else can uh, he play here? Uh, can it be something else? I don't know. Queen c6 could actually be a move also, uh, but maybe this is just unnecessary to play. Uh, yeah, it, it is absolutely not necessary. Queen c6 could be a move, but queen c8 looks like a very, very good move. What to do? Take here. We can actually, we can even go this check here, but we take here and we give this check. And after here, we can play queen take b2. This is just and you will need to go, uh, with defending all the pawns, maybe go f3 here, and now we can just yeah, start playing slowly, queen is 2 maybe you try to get some, get some checks here, and we will just yes, go maybe 
I don't know, Queen C2 could be, uh, maybe we want to go even, we have maybe Queen D6 here, and we want to go to play against G2. There is so many things you can go. Uh, let's see, Anna took, I, Anna took, yeah, uh, Anna took, I would have waited with taking, but she wanted to do that, and uh, yeah, Anna took, I'm sure, yeah, he will take back, there is nothing else he can do, and I guess after he takes, I think Anna will go Rook G6 here, uh, I think Anna will go uh, Rook G6 here, the next move, I would actually have preferred to go, uh, let's see, let's see how they played, uh, she took on D2, uh, Rook G6, what happened here now? What did he do? Did he go H4, G4? I cannot see what he played. It's Anna's time. She is down to... What happened here? It's, no, it's his move. Anna played Rook G6. This is a threat. She wants to make mate in one. Um, so he will have to play, maybe, maybe he will have to play something like e4. I guess he's going to play e4 here, but after e4, Anna might have rook d6, uh, putting some pressure here. It could be he go e4 uh, in this position. Uh, it could absolutely be he go e4. I think absolutely this is what he has to do. The point is, if you go knight f3, we will absolutely just grab it and it's pinned, so the game will just be over. You cannot play this, so he will have to play something. He can go f3, but his king sound will be very weak. He can go queen e2, but it's a passing move. Queen e2, no, queen f1. Uh, queen f1 would be, but then, then it will be very, very passive. We have this queen d5 and we control everything. No, you cannot play this. So he will move one of the pawns. He will move f pawn or e4. I guess e4 is the most logical move. I would absolutely go e4 in this position like this. I think this is logical to play. Uh, it's absolutely logical to play. And um, here, maybe we can rook d6, maybe we can go rook c6. Um, so you can play different uh, moves in this position, maybe queen c6 is also possible, but or maybe queen c8 could be a possibility, and the plan is if you go here, we will actually, we will take here, and uh, you will have to make something like g3, and here we have rook c6, and we are threatening a mate on the last rank, this is just getting very, very dangerous uh, for, for, yeah, so let's see what was played, he played, what did he do? He played he played e4. e4 was played, so now Anna's down to one minute. What is she going to do? What is she going to do here? Um, she is, uh, she can go rook e6, but it's a little bit passive. She can go rook d6. I, I would say that this is actually a very good move, rook d6 to play. Uh, she can also go rook c6. Uh, there is lots of things, but the problem is she has to play, and she played. What did she play? She played something, but I don't see what she played. I cannot see what did she do. Did she go queen d8 maybe? What did she do? She moved her rook. I think she played rook d6. I think she played rook d6. Rook d6. She's attacking. So I'm sure there will be knight c4 coming here. So after knight c4, but then we have the check here and we have queen take e4. And now, if you go check here and you take this just to get close, we will just play this queen f4 check. And we have this winning endgame if you want to. If you take here, we will go just rook b b2 and it will just be winning. So let's go back. So Anna play rook d6. Let's see what her opponents play. Anna is only down to one minute. She has only eight moves to do, but it's not so many. Uh, it's quite a lot of moves, but she just needs to keep control. I'm guessing what will a knight f1? Uh, yeah, he can absolutely go knight f1 if he wants to. And uh, he can go knight f1, but after a move like knight f1, I just think rook d1 is a good move, because if you go take here, we will just go queen a6, and you see, we will just win the, the knight. There's no way for white. You have a check, but after that you cannot defend the knight 
and here we will just, uh, just win the game. So let's go back. So let's see what he's doing. Where is he going now? Is he going to be passive? He played knight a freak and Anna took here. So this is what's happening now. This is very important what's happening. So Anna played this move so quickly, so quickly, and now she's only six more more. She's actually threatening queen take f4. I think you have to take, I think you, you, can, you can play this if you want to. And now, of course, it's very important to see that 95 is not possible. We have we just take it. And if you try, if you take knight takes, I just want to show that this is going to be your mate. This is mate. You cannot do it. So, you, and you can absolutely take here this, and then we will have this end game, which is just completely winning. It's just winning because you will take the pawns. You can come here, but we will going to take this pawn. We will take the next pawn, and even if you get this one, it's not important. These pawns will just win the game. So let's see. So Anna played this very very nicely. She gave a check, she played queen take e4. Now her opponent is in big problems because queen f4 check is the big threat. Queen e4 f4 check is such a big threat, and there's no way, there is no way he can defend it without. He can, he can defend against it, but then Anna will be able to change queens. And this is what she wants to do. She wants to change queens. This is what she actually wants to do all the time. She, without the queens, there is no danger at all in her position. And now, because she has this threat, queen f4 and take on f3, and it will be made. Check, there is only one move Anna can do. He gave a check, so Anna has to play. King h7, and she has to play queen king t here, and I think this is also what we see on the board. Let's see. She played it. What will he do here? He's thinking. Yeah, this is what was played. Uh, this is absolutely what was played, and here. Anna is threatening to win the game with this, so he can play queen take e5, queen take f7. He cannot play this. He would love to play this knight f7 and try to get some tricks, but Anna has queen f4, and yeah, you saw this mate. Rook takes the first rank, the queen takes the second rank, so gets back. So he will needs to take one of the pawns, but Anna will be able to change queens. So he has played. What did he play? What did he play? He hasn't played. Ah. So, yeah, so Anna has two minutes uh, left. It is always takes a little bit time before we get the moves on the board. Anna has, oh, sorry, sorry, King H, this was the only move. And now he's thinking, and he grabbed the F7 pawn. So this is what he did. And now Anna should just go Queen F4 check. Queen F4 is just a very, very good move to play because she wants to change queens. And this is what she did. This is what she did, because uh, she doesn't have to mate her opponent, but she has to change the queens. And this is something to remember when you're sitting at the board. What pieces do I want to keep on the board and what pieces do I want to change? And when you have uh, material up, you want to change the queen, as I told you before, more than anything else. You want to change the queen. So queen take f7 was played. This was played. Uh, we will keep on here. This was played and this was played. And now it's her opponent's uh, time to move. And you can see it's equal pawns, but there's no way white will be able to defend these pawns. No way. So even if you are jumping here, we will, uh, we will actually go all the way here. You are coming here. We are defending it. And now B3 will come. And if you go something like that, yeah, you can, we just go and, and take this pawn. And this will, you have to give the knight for the other pawn. So the rook is so, is so, the rook is so strong. So uh, this is the position at the board. This is the position. There is no way uh, white can save this because we can see that uh, the king is not, the king is not possible to be active. And if the king could move to defend these pawns, then the king's side pawns would be uh, lost. So this is the problem. The knight is a slow piece. The knight can only stand on one of the side and try to how to defend uh, pawns on one of the side. 
And the same with the king. And now it is upon an effort. This king is not even getting out. But even if it got out, it was too far away. And the rook is such a tremendous piece, so strong in the end game. It's such a strong piece. And uh, uh, so here, it's just so winning for her. I don't know. I guess her opponent will keep on playing. Yes, keep on playing, at least until there are still three more moves to make until passing the control on 95. This was absolutely expected. I think Anna will go. She can go rook d2 if she wants. She can play whatever she wants to. Everything is fine. Everything, everything is absolutely fine. Important is, and she has like two minis and only for three more. So she can rook d2, rook a1, but just go and grab the pawns. Uh, she can absolutely also go a4 if she would like to, but I think that's not, not uh, uh, that's uh, not important. So just rook d2, rook b1, rook a1, everything is fine. Rook f1 is also fine if you want to, but rook d2 or rook a1. I would probably have gone uh, rook d, rook a1. So let's see, let's see what Anna does. And the only, uh, she's down to two minis, but there are only three mores three more moves to make, so I'm not so worried any longer about her position because it's such a good uh, piece, it's such a good position and she has such a good rook, which is such a good piece. So uh, uh, knight c4 came, so she will take an f2, uh, she can go rook c4 also, but she will probably, she took an f2, absolutely, she played these moves quickly because she knows what to do, rook Take f2 was a good move. Now, uh, so, and what now her threat is actually to play with her pawns. So, I don't know what her opponent is going to do. I guess he's going to take, yeah, this is what it is. So, this was on the board rook take f2, knight take f5, and rook take f2. And now, I guess he wants to go knight c6. So, he wants to keep, uh, he wants to keep pressure on the b4 pawn, but then Anna has f3, and this f pawn will decide again. If you go king g3, we will go f2, and the pawn will be a queen, and if the king comes here, we will just play like this, and we will come back, and then after the king will enter, and this king cannot do anything. We, we just keep this pawn. We don't, we just keep this pawn. Or we can take on h2, but there is no Take an A2. It's not about it. So let's see what's happening. This is the position, and I guess now Anna will go F3. She played also F3. Anna has made her 41st move. She will. She has made the time. She has lots of time left. And now her opponent resigned. The game is finished. Oh, I'm so happy, happy for Anna. It was very nice. She has played a very nice game. She. Uh, it was. Um, it was exciting. Very exciting. And. Um, when her opponent, uh, it was a battle of square, I would say it was a big battle of this c5 square, but uh, in the middle game her opponent chose to play some slow moves, and then Anna could open up the position, and when she opened up the position, she played it in a little bit of a tricky way, and what happened? All of a sudden, her opponent uh, decided, uh, her opponent's queen came into attack, and Anna won material, and after she won material, she played also very well and could win the game. So this was very nice. So Anna won the first game. This was the first round out of nine. She will play eight more games in Stockholm, Rilton, Ela. And uh, now they're a little bit speaking after, after the game and uh, like you normally do. And uh, we can see lots of games has been finished. And just stay, just stay here because Anna is going to come here. She's going to come and speak with you. She's going to tell you about her thoughts, everything. So just stay here uh, with Anna and she will be back. First she will come here, but she will also be, be back tomorrow. She will play her second round tomorrow at 3 o'clock. She will be speaking with you a little bit before 3 o'clock, just uh, before the game starts. And then uh, I, her mother, I will uh, comment her game again. So just hope you will, first of all, stay here. Just to hear Anna's voice. I think that's so exciting. It's also when you have played a game, you know, now they have been playing 
for three and a half hours. They started like 3.30, 3.45. There was some delay in the first round, which is very typical in an open tournament with lots of players, lots of players traveling from all over the world, also lots of players traveling from all over Sweden and all over <laughs> Stockholm. Stockholm is a huge town, so not surprising there was a delay. Anna was won her first round. She got this nice start in the tournament, and that's, that feels very good. And when you have been, you know, working so hard during three and a half hours to, to you know, to have won the game, it's just a very nice sensation. But it is because everything can happen. We have this. Sometimes there are draws, sometimes there are losses. But I think Anna is so happy to get a good start in the tournament. So Anna is playing in Rilton. She's playing the second tournament, Rilton Elo. There is about 130, 140 players because there were some players taken by. There were 140 players playing today. Anna is seeded number one with a rating uh, 2094. The first one is seeded like 2160 or 2170. It's a young Swedish player, Axel Berlin. And the second one is another young Swedish Play. He's actually junior, young, but I, I have a little bit of problems to pronounce his name. But Anna is coming any any moment. But these are the two first uh, players. Anna played against uh, French player Alexis Duolt. Um, I hope I pronounced this correctly. He was less rated, 300 points less. But uh, we saw also that Anna played a very nice game. She put pressure on her opponent, and when she put pressure, he went wrong, but he had problems to try the best. It was difficult for him. So Anna played just a very, very beautiful game, very nice game. I'm so happy to see it. And it was also very nice for her to get a start like this. So yes, stay a little bit longer. She will be here any, any moment. She will be here with you, telling you your thoughts. I'm also curious about to hear that. And... Uh, um, and uh, so, so yeah, just, just stay a little bit longer. And uh, it was very exciting to see why she was uh, spending so much time in the middle game, uh, uh, why she took so much time and uh, what she was thinking and why she took this, the decision she did. But she has played a very good uh, game. Uh, she, hasn't, she hasn't made any mistakes, I would say. Um, she has played very fine moves, she had played some tricky moves, and that made it difficult for her opponent. So this is Rilton Elo, and uh, so here there are two tournaments going on now. The Rilton Elo, which is the second tournament uh, for plays under 2,200, and there are Rilton Cup, which is the first tournament, which are for anyone who are normally more than 2,200. But if you are a junior or if you are a woman, play here, uh, you play there also if you have more than 2,000. So this is a little bit a way of encouraging. He really wanted it. He said, make a strong tournament, but also let the young players play there. Let the young players get a chance to play against strong foreigners, but also against strong Swedish players. And this is what they are doing in Rilton. And here she's coming. She's here with you now. And she will tell you about everything, her thoughts in the game. And uh, yeah, that will be great. So... So, so, it will be just so nice. Yes, stay here. Way! <laughs> Hello, chat. I'm so happy I won. <laughs> I can't believe this. Or no, I can't believe it, but I also got really low on time. <laughs> Mom, how was the game? Ah, it was good. It was, it was good. good. Yeah, I was mostly concerned about time. And maybe... Um, uh, maybe in the opening, uh, you play. You were a little bit too much in a rush. I would have wished that you played. I wanted to be in a rush, mom. You know, because you, you gave some squares, and he could play for that. But when he played some slow moves, you were absolutely fine. Yeah, yeah. Mm. Oh, oh, yeah. Exactly. Yeah, I think. I think in the opening, I don't know. I think I was kind of for, trying to force something a little bit too much. Yeah, you don't have to take a C for so early. I think you should go castling. And then you wait one more with taking on C4. This is what I think. Okay, taking on C4. Oh. Yeah, okay, okay, I see. Uh, and I would actually have liked to go H6 first. 
H6? H6, Bishop H4. Yeah, and yeah, yeah, so that I don't have any like checkmate. Yeah, so you get this move for free. Because yeah. when you have the knight on uh, this hand, he, yeah. he never wants to take, you take back with the knight. Yeah. And you have the bishop pass. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. Hello, Dad. How did you do? Draw. <laughs> Draw against who? 124.73. 2473? Cassan. Cassan. Wait! No, Guys, my dad is here too! Also with black. Yay! No, his name is Cassan from Norway. Norwegian ah, okay. player. Yeah, okay. Norwegian. Okay. That's amazing. Yeah, so my dad uh, my dad just drew a 2473. That is great. Yeah, close the door maybe. Close the door. Yeah, uh, but guys, I am very happy. I was playing very, I was so scared in the beginning of the stream for the stream to not to work. Like you guys have no idea the amount of, did you say the amount of tech issues we had? I said only we had a little bit. I no, we say. had <laughs> immense tech issues to the point where everything got fixed six minutes before my game. And it was the biggest clutch of my life. Like I have never clutched something so bad. Six minutes before the game stuff got fixed and we knew that we would be able to stream. Like before that, I didn't know if we were gonna get a stream. And then like, I was like freaking out. And then and then all of a sudden, like the, you know, my producer, before the game started, he comes up and he gives me a thumbs up and I'm like, yes, we have a stream. We had immense tech issues. You guys have no idea, uh, but I'm, I'm very happy. I'm very happy. But then during the game in the beginning, I was like, what if there was no stream? But then my producer went up and took pictures and I was like, okay, if there was no stream, he would be freaking out and he would not be here taking pictures. So the sign that he's right now taking pictures of me means that there's a stream going on. But I was freaking out about the stream. I wasn't even thinking about the game. I was just freaking out about the about the stream. Uh, but that was really good. Yeah, only we had some issues with the microphone. Sometimes it went away. But oh, your microphone? Mm -hmm. That was the only thing. Okay, yes, okay. well, uh, we'll, we'll rewatch everything and make it flawless tomorrow, guys. Okay, it's been a while since we've done this uh, but tomorrow it'll all be flawless but yeah I'm, I can look a little bit at my game uh, if I go back a few <gasps> did I have an accuracy of 95% mm -hmm. yeah yeah it was very good yes wait I had an accuracy of 95 that makes me so happy wait that is awesome that is awesome I also was told that there were gonna be flowers and stuff but there were no flowers we didn't have time for flowers but I thought the end was nice when I went here and did all of this like oh you guys oh can you see it yeah you can I thought this was nice when I went like at the end, when I went rook c2. Yes, this is a good move. Right? Because I was going to go rook g6 first, but then I realized that this was better. But he played very passively. And then this, I was just trying to gain time. And okay, this, and then I saw that I had this. Yeah, this is very good. Yeah, this is very good. And, and then I saw that this is just winning. Because mm. if I trade queens, it's winning on you. And it's like, it's going to be forced to be, there's going to be a trade of queens forced, for yeah. sure. Yeah, yeah, and this is what you want to. When you have this endgame, you just want to change the heavy pieces. You want to change first the queen and yeah. then the rook. But mainly the first the queen, because the queen is the only tricky piece, no? That he can try to make something against you. Yeah. So yeah, when you change the queen, yeah, that was very good. Yeah, yeah, I don't know if rook d6 is a good move. I was going to go, yeah, it's a bad move, right? I was no, gonna no, go, I don't think it's a bad move. It's I fine. was going to go a5, but I got scared of queen a6. Ah, but then you can go rook a6, rook a8 actually, if you want to. Rook a8? Yes. And then I was scared of the queen hanging out over here. <laughs> the, the queen hanging? No, like the queen being on, I don't know, I don't want the queen to come, I don't know why I was scared of that. I just didn't like the queen being there. Yeah, no, but what you can do, because after you go a4 and the knight, and, and then a, where is going? Queen b6, rook a8, queen b6, and you go a4. I don't know why is it, is it going. Yeah, you're right. I don't know why I was scared or, of the queen or, or, coming or, in there. Or you can go rook d6 also. Yeah, so. I don't know why. I think I, I wasn't going to go rook d6. Like, my stomach was telling me that that was not the greatest move. But then it was like, yeah, I don't know. Then I just did it. My initial thought was to go rook c2. This was my initial plan. But the reason I didn't do this move was because I was worried about once again. Oh, I was worried about takes takes and queen a6 and i just i don't know i didn't want to lose my pawn but i don't know why i'm scared of this because i can just go king g7 and there's nothing yeah yes go king yeah G7. i don't know i got scared of the, <laughs> i don't know why i got so scared of the queen coming up to a6 mm. but you know you have such a good position so uh you can play uh you have such a good position so you can play lots of things the most important is you keep your position 
Yeah. You don't have to play the exact uh, most, most accurate move. Yes, keep your position. But I want to play the most accurate no. move. No, <laughs> but you have to think of the time. So I here, know. the only yeah. problem is the time and that you give him some counter play like yeah. you shouldn't do. So rook to six is very fine. You don't want to have double pawns. Fine, you avoid double pawns. You don't want the queen to come to a6. Okay, you avoid it. okay so, so you think, think that was fine. Yeah, rook to six. But I, I thought all of this yeah. was so forced. No, 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 no. What is stronger actually here? You know what, of knight d4, the strong is to go e5 directly. Here? Yes, you know why? If why? You, uh, you, I will show you why, because you will change queens. Ah, because queen b5, the bishop has to move. Oh, I went on the spot. You win those, but you're changing queens. Um, you, you, yeah, 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 yeah. Now I'm forcing, yeah, I'm forcing the trade of queens. Yes, and okay, now you just, you just defend the e5. You can go rook d5 if yeah, you want to. Or knight d7 or anything. Or rook d5 if you want. Or rook e8 maybe. Yeah, rook e8. Ah, that. that's so smart. Yeah, mm. that's so smart. I did it the wrong move order. I first took the rook. Yeah, and then I just entered a bunch of unnecessary counterplay. Yeah, you're right, mom. It's a little more exact, but your position is so good. So, so it really, because you see, the knight on b3 is such a bad place. Yeah, and, and it always allows me to go rook c2. That was my idea, that I always wanted to be able to bring up my yeah. rook. But I was really, here, I was so shocked about every single move that my opponent did. Like, after, first and foremost, I didn't think that, okay, yeah, he took, which I guess is normal, but like, after takes, takes, knight takes, yeah. I thought he was going to go bishop c4, he went here. Uh, bishop c4 is the only move we can, it's the best move. Yeah, and then I was going to go bishop e4, but I didn't like it due to queen c4. No, look here. Slightly, you know, no, he escaped with queen c4, queen b5. Exactly, so I went rook c8, and I thought he was going to go rook fd1, and then I had knight d3, and I thought this was so nice. Yes, you have to go knight d3, and in this position he has to go... Uh, I was so proud. <laughs> yeah, no, he has to go queen b1 is the only move. <laughs> Yeah, queen b1, and then I was going to go takes, and then I just thought that this was, like, pretty nice for me. I was going to go something like knight d5, I think, and, and put pressure on this. Yeah, that is what you can do. He will have to play, maybe he can play, I don't know, queen f4, you have knight c3, maybe. No, so he will have to play maybe g3 here. Yeah, so, so play. yeah this, is, this is a little better, but this was the only thing he could do. This yeah. was the, uh, what he had to do. Was but like, I was so, I don't know, I, I was so nervous because I feel like I haven't seen a physical board in so long. And the first time you play a tournament, it's always like so weird to see a physical board. Because you just kind of feel like, what am I doing? What is this? Mm -hmm. And at first I was like, oh, I'm going to play so fast. Because I just, I was thinking about other things. Like I was thinking about the stream. I was <laughs> thinking about everything. So I was like, okay, let me just play fast. But then I thought all my time, like all my time just disappeared. We saw that. <laughs> so it was the time issue we were worried about. But when you win material. Were you was, worried about my time? I, I was worried until you play rook c8. And when you, when you, uh, and you, after you play rook c8, queen b1, bishop b4. And then, then I was less worried because you, you play this knight e3. You play all these good moves. Yeah. And when you have material up, I was less worried. But it was, you know, you have a little time. But, um, mm -hmm. yeah, but then I was less worried. But you were spending very, very much time, yeah, in the beginning. Yeah, I was. Uh, yeah. And maybe b4 is also too quickly. Um, this is b4? I didn't know theory. Okay. Like, this is my main problem. I do not know theory in chess. I didn't know theory. I just played something. Yes. No, it, no I just think if you go here, no, in this position, um, I think in this position, maybe a6 or maybe bishop b7 is, is maybe more logical. But I think you shouldn't take on c4 so quickly, actually. Uh, but now we we'll go b4. Knight a4 is a good move uh, because it controls c5. And now we have... Uh, uh, oh, it's possible even for him to take. Oh, okay, that. yeah, but this Knight is a good move. Yes, and is my move queen a five good? Uh, yeah, or what did I do first? Did I go queen a five here? Yes, queen a five. Is this a normal move or is this just weird? <laughs> No, in general, I, you know, in general, if white plays the most exact, you you will have probably some problem. Maybe rook c one now. Okay. Uh, maybe rook c one to put pressure here. But uh, rook c one, can I not just go uh, b three check? I don't know you can go. No, no, he played castling. Castling is right. Sorry. Castling is right. No, no, of yeah. course. The castling is the best move. Sorry. Yeah. So, and now you play bishop b7. And now I think he should go rook c1. He should put press, some pressure here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, and what he should do, but it's very difficult. If you castling, I wanted to go e5, but I think it's crazy. e5 here. E5, yes. I don't know. You're opening up. You know, the, the pawn you want to move is the C5 pawn, but C5 yeah. is dangerous with you still... Uh, you yeah, know, with yeah. I know this is crazy. Mm. No, I, uh, I need to study theory, chat. That is... I need to study theory, but okay. I was yeah. able to... He was playing very passively. Like, there were a lot of moves that I was scared that he was going to do, and he never did them. 
Yeah. No, what happened is he played too slow-mo, bishop f4, and his bishop is better placed on g5, mm. because sometimes he can play bishop take f6. Mm. If you take with a piece, you will lose control of c5. He will, he will put the piece on c5, mm. and your bishop will not play. Mm. And if you take with a pawn, your pawn is more weakened, but probably this is the best. Mm. And he played bishop f4, where it's not so good placed, actually. Yeah. And then he played Yeah, bishop f4 was very strange. Yeah. So, so okay. But look, f8 was a very good move, and also to play c5 after. Yeah, this was very good. Yeah, yeah. Yay! Yeah. Yay! Okay, so mom, you weren't roasting me that much. No, no, no. I think, no, it was only <laughs> the time. It was only the time. <laughs> and uh, maybe you were, um, I would have wished that you, instead of taking c for your castle first, you know, make castling first. And that but way. castling is boring! No, I'm kidding. No, I probably should have a castle. I, I was feeling a little bit worried about my king, to be honest, especially when, when I played h6, I was just happy because I knew that my king would never get checkmate. He was trying to go for background checkmates, but but I'm very happy. This was the first round, mm -hmm. um, guys. The most honestly, um, uh, what's the word? Embarrassing thing happened, and that was that because I was so stressed about the stream before, like the game starting, I had no idea who I was facing. <laughs> and it was so hard for me to find the name of my opponent. But I was like, if I go there and I ask him what's his name, he's gonna know that I haven't prepared. Like I cannot ask him what his name is, right? So I was like running around the playing hole trying to find the pairing so that I would be able to like remember his name and write it down and seem as if I knew who I was facing and like, and that I had prepared and stuff, but I had no idea who I was facing. And then I just tried to look confident, so I just went there and sat down and wrote his name. But I had literally just looked at it, I had no idea who I was playing. So, because yeah, because I didn't have any time to prepare today. So, it's going to be so nice. From tomorrow, I'm going to be able to prepare, and uh, it's going to be much more, you know, relaxed, because uh, now we have the setup working. So, guys, tomorrow the stream is going to be flawless, no tech issues. <laughs> <laughs> I'm knocking on wood, but uh, tomorrow it's going to be flawless. Um, I hope that you guys have, have enjoyed this. I am, I'm really happy to be back competing. Like Competing is my favorite thing, and to be back doing tournament streams, it's amazing. And mom, I'm so happy that you're here commentating. Mm. It's so fun, and that you know we can get this to work, and that we can uh, make this happen. I'm, I'm really happy, and I'm also really grateful for Rilton, too. They've been accommodating me like really, really, really well. They've been so nice. Like, you know, even uh, even me not having a delay on my board, like, they, they've been super nice to try to make the stream as flawless as possible. So, Rilton, fantastic. They have, you know, they're, they're, they're treating me super well, and they're really uh, trying to make the stream as good as possible. So, I'm really happy for that. So, that is amazing. That is amazing. But I'm very excited, guys. Um, I will be publishing the VOD from today's stream on my extra channel in case you've missed it. I'm also now going to film a recap of my game so that you guys can, uh, you know, really see my thought process in case you've uh, missed any of it. And also, I need to <laughs> I need to analyze the game a little bit more. Um, but I hope that you guys have enjoyed this. It's been so fun. We're going to be going live tomorrow a little bit earlier. I'm knocking on wood again. Uh, but the plan is to go live 2.45 p.m., so like... 15 minutes before the game starts so that I can talk to you before the game. That was the plan for today, too. I wanted to talk to you guys before the game, but I didn't have time. Um, so tomorrow, everything will work. I will talk to you before the game. I will win my game. <laughs> it'll be a flawless stream. <laughs> that is what we can all hope for. <laughs> also, can I just say, it's so fun that there are so many streamers here. Like, Jules Gambit is here. There's several chess streamers here. Like, Kostya is here. I think Alexandra Chess is coming tomorrow. So there is, like, a bunch of streamers here, which is uh, super cool to see. So I'm, you know, hoping that we all streamers do well in this tournament. I'm really hoping that. Also, at the end of the game, I was trying to wish my opponent good luck for the rest of the tournament. But he was like, what? What? And I was like, good luck. And then it got a bit awkward, right? Because I had repeated myself like three times and it wasn't really that important what I was saying. And I was like, good luck for the rest of your turn. And I was like, I don't speak English. <laughs> and I was like, just, I'm leaving this here. Goodbye. Thank you for the game. I'm sorry. I'm sorry I'm talking to you. Because <laughs> it's also kind of weird to talk to your opponent when you've won. Because I'm obviously super happy. And he's like super like not happy you know like he's probably really sad and i felt so bad and i was like oh no like he's gonna think that i said something really stupid um but yeah if you're my opponent i was just saying good luck for the rest of my tournament <laughs> yeah it was french 
Okay, guys. Well, I think with this, we're going to wrap up round number one. I will be filming my recap. Thank you guys so much for watching the stream, for supporting every single sub. My mom is an amazing commentator. She will one day learn to say thank you to all the subs, uh, but I, I need to learn that too. So thank you so much, guys, every single one of you that have subbed. I really appreciate it. Uh, super appreciate the support. Um, it's thanks to that that we can, you know, do these sort of events. So I really, really appreciate the support. So, guys, I will be back tomorrow. Round two, real Danilo. We're at one out of one. Perfect score so far. Very good. Tomorrow we have the white pieces probably, which is going to be exciting. So I'm very happy. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to now take a deep breath. <laughs> um, thank you guys so much once again for watching the stream. I will be rating somebody amazing. Who should we rate, everybody? Who should we rate? Also, this is not my computer. I'm going to rate through my phone. Give me an amazing person that we should rate. Um... Let's see who is who's live right now. Who is live right now? Let's see, let's see. Should I I should almost rate wait, what's uh what's the channel of Rilton? I kinda wanna rate the channel of Rilton. I'm gonna do that actually. What's the name of the channel? It's let's see, raid Rilton. Guys, don't go anywhere. This is gonna be the most epic uh the most epic raid ever. Okay, we're raiding the actual tournament. We're raiding the actual tournament. Is it called Rilton Cup Streams? Rilton Cup Streams. Oh, that's actually the name. Okay, I'm hoping I'm raiding the right person. Okay, I'm sending it over here. Am I raiding the right person? I do not know. I have no idea. <laughs> okay, I'm hoping. All right, everybody. Thank you so much once again for watching the stream. I will see you all tomorrow for round number two. Okay, mom, do you want to say bye? Thank you for doing the commentary. Chad, say thanks to mom for doing commentary, for being here for so many hours. Or how many hours has it been? Oh, it hasn't been that long, just four hours. Yeah, yeah four hours, yeah, but, it, but you played a good game, so I enjoyed it. You so. enjoyed it. You enjoyed yeah. it when I went. Yeah, of course. <laughs> it's so, much easier. Yeah, yeah you know, but I always enjoy when you find all this good moon, Rook C8 and Bishop E4, Knight yeah. So. Okay, great. mom, do you want to wave bye? Mm, bye, bye? Bye, bye. Bye, Chad, bye. see you tomorrow. Bye. Thank you so much for watching the stream. Bye-bye, take bye -bye. care. Bye. 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 Mm -hmm. Bye.